Well, let's get into it. So today's guest is obviously Justin Swanstrom. The guy needs hardly any introduction at this point. He's freaking drag racer, TV star, no preps king champion, winner, multiple time winner, the whole nine. The guy um, has the hardest schedule of any drag racing series coming up in probably about a week here. Yeah, I leave Monday. And you're like, leave Monday. Like, so, you're going to war, basically. That's so like the first, which is June. I, I get my months mixed up here right now. Yeah. Um, so we start Monday. So the first, first month of racing is June. There's five weeks in June, and we're out all five weeks. We start out in Ohio for next weekend. We move over to Virginia. Then we move up to Minnesota, then down to Kentucky, and then New Hampshire. For the first month. So, so you guys kind of zigzag through the country. So like I would have, me personally, you know, getting back into the to the series and everything, it would have been cool to be like hit one race, maybe two, and yeah. then you would have got our feet wet. Nah, we're just going to go ahead and do five back-to-back weeks. So it, it's going to be brutal. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, they it's really threw you guys back into it. And this is going to really like set kind of the stage for probably the end of it. Oh, for sure. I tell people all the time, you, you got to... I, I I did the proper proper deal in the beginning as in getting all the spare parts. I think that's going to be the biggest thing coming to the middle of the year or the end of the year is going to yeah. be the spare parts. Um, so that that that's what's going to be the tough battle. And that's going to actually dictate on how people race and, and moving forward with it because it does cost a lot of money. I mean, you yeah. race doing your stuff. And, I mean, you got, you got a lot of people that race doing their deal. This stuff costs money. But now, just imagine, like, like on your end, uh, I don't know how much it costs to be able to go to a, an event with your setup or whatever, but now multiply it by five, five weekends back to back. Yeah. And then you're traveling throughout the week. So like you don't have time to really do your normal stuff if, if you have a normal job or if somebody has a normal job. So yep. this schedule here is really for, you know, people that are doing racing full time. And a lot of them have businesses, those guys. A lot of them weren't full time racers no. when they started. And then. On top of that, you expect the merch to kind of help you along the way. But if you sell out a merch in the first two events, and that, that you're going to struggle to even get that so, by the third. So that fourth. was my, I, I've been, I'm three, this will be my third season with uh, Street Outlaw No Prep Kings. And it's uh, only their third season, right? Well, no, is this, is, this is season six of, oh, is it of season No six? Prep Kings. Okay. Um, Street Outlaws has been, I think, I think they're going on 13 years. Oh, shit. Um, so they, they've been around a long time. And, and I was, you know, I was younger back then. I wasn't, uh, I, I wouldn't say I wasn't a fan. I watched it and was able to you know, see it. But I never thought that I would, you know, be a part of it. Yeah. And then uh, we came up on uh, back in, I think it was 2018, maybe is when they ran it. They ran a race at Bristol and uh, it was a two hundred thousand dollar race. Uh, I remember I was working, you know, construction on a vac truck and I was watching the videos on a Tuesday because it rained throughout the weekend. So they ran the race on a Tuesday and they did a live feed of it. And uh, I watched the race. And from that day forward, I literally, you know, I text my dad right after and I told him, I said, I want to go do, I want to go do that. We were doing radio racing. Radio racing is fun. It's cool. The only thing that it's, it's different about radio racing is that you got to have good conditions. You got to have a great racetrack. You got to make sure everything lines up to be able to make a radio work where the big tire stuff, you can get away with a lot. So that's where I I was like, we done radio racing my whole life. So I said, you know what? It's time to do something else. So when I watched that video, we just moved on and I said, all right, it's time to go figure out how we can get a part of this. And, and do that. But yes, the schedule is very tough. And a lot of people, like you said, had businesses and they've shut their businesses down. Like there's, because you, you can't, you can't do both. And, and, and it's, it sucks to say that, but it, like I tell people, it is hard because if you have a business back home, good thing about me is my business goes with me. I mean, I do racing for a living. So no matter where I go, it's, it's keep going. Yeah, the channel follows, the merch follows, Everything does all that. Good. It grows alongside of doing and, this. And I've learned a lot in the last three years, uh, not to go around and beat around the bush, but like you were saying, the merch. Merch is where it's good. So like this year, I just placed an order for $25,000 yep. for merch for this season. It probably will last me all season, but just say hypothetically, you know, my merch sales do go up from last year and, you know, we sell out in the first six races. I got to make sure that I am prepared for the, you know, following eight races to be able to keep going. So it's a, it's definitely a timing deal to be able to make sure you stay up with everything. I was going to say, it's like almost you need to be a master of logistics as well. Cause like when your car has broken and over I'm the past couple of years, I've 
from the outside, I'm like, damn, that's impressive to be able to get a car back together. Because it's one thing, like, all right, Cameron's time. That's mm -hmm. one thing. But, like, the parts rolling in, timing-wise on that, even simple things like, you know, chromoly tubing showing up sure. when you need it. Like, the logistics on that, when you switched from Pro Charger to, to screw well, the screw blower, yep. yeah. That kind of stuff, like the small little logistics that may seem minor when you actually have to order parts and talk to 10 oh, different sure. people and then suddenly things don't match up the way they were supposed to. I, I so so that to answer that, that would be I surround myself around good people and I feel like you have to do that. There's this thing has and I tell people all the time, I, I wouldn't be able to do this without the fans. I would be able to do this without the sponsors. And then I mean that because this thing has outgrown me. It, it's and I had to learn that I had to, you know, hire people and put people in place to be able to help me keep succeeding with it. I, I'm big on wanting to control everything and keep everything and, and try to do it all in house as in uh, making sure that it stays good. Well, like I said, it's outgrown me, so I can't I can't fulfill all the jobs. So to answer that. Man, you, you just gotta have the right people around you, and and like Cameron, when we did wreck that car and everything, the good thing about it is I had all the parts already. If we didn't have the parts, we wouldn't have been able to complete that. Yeah. But we had already had spares. I had a spare front end. I had a uh, spare strut, spare shocks, and uh, that's just being prepared. I mean, I I prepare for the worst that can happen. You don't ever want to wreck the car. I don't want to wreck again. Trust me. Mm -hmm. I've hit I've hit plenty of walls, probably more walls than anybody, and. It's not fun. Uh, it's not fun at all. And it costs a lot of money when that happens. So my goal is going in this year is to uh, try to keep it off the wall, try to win some races and hopefully win the championship. But uh, you, you definitely got to be prepared for this deal, because if you had a month or two between races, it wouldn't be as bad. But no, that'd, cars, be, that'd be easy. That'd be cars would probably go a lot faster. Oh, it's, it's, it's that would make it so much easier. But with our schedule, we race the following weekend five states away yeah so you got to make sure that you're able to hit that and that's why a lot of people even me have a second car with a second car in case something was to happen and that's the reason why i built a second car was in case something was to happen i was able to switch over and keep the process rolling do they let you fully just hot swap a car in without yeah, any like you can, you no can run points any penalty nothing no. like that so like you could bar you could rent a car from For someone sure. you could uh so it's changed a little bit and uh the first year it and i would be the first one to not complain, but I would question it. But like the first year that I was doing it, you could hop in any car. Like mm -hmm. say if, say Kai Kelly's car, you know, hurt a motor, blew up, did whatever, and your car was there. He could come over, ask you, hey, I'll give you $1,000. Let me ride your car. Okay. And then he was good. Everything was normal. Now they have changed it a little bit because they would, they would do that at any round. So if he was going into the semis, he would be able to come borrow your car. Now they have changed it. Whatever car you start out with on Friday is the car that you have to race throughout the whole event. So if you make your first pass in your car or first pass in my car, that is the car you have to finish with for that event. Starting the next event, you can come mm -hmm. with whatever you want. But that's the best way to do that's it. That's a lot yeah. better now because if you do hurt a motor or, you know, somehow, you know, wreck a car or whatever, you don't just get to go borrow somebody else to be able to get the easy points because mm -hmm. you still get points just by going to the next round. If you win the round, you get more points. But just by showing up, you still get points. So that changed quite a few things, and it made it a little bit uh, better for It everyone. makes sense for the fans, too, yeah. because the fans in the stands are going to be like, what the hell? I thought, exactly. I thought Justin was pulling up for round two, for and sure. then you pull up in somebody else's car. Or if somebody really wants to be baller, and they have a night car mm -hmm. where once the sun comes down, you have a car that makes a lot more power or something. And then and, your daytime car and, that could get down on any surface. As long as you made, and since now this is where the gray area comes in, and I've even thought about this too. When I say you start out in the car, like if for me personally, I would just make a hit in both cars on Friday. Yeah. Then you could do whatever you want. That's in a gray area. Mm -hmm. Nobody's done it yet, but I just feel like there would be they couldn't question nothing because as long as you made the pass on Friday. You're good for the weekend. So, yeah. like, if I had a second car at the track, I don't carry a second car with me, um, but uh, it, that's a little bit ignorant, I think. <laughs> but uh, if uh, if I had a second car there, I would just make a hit in both cars, just in case something was to happen, you'd be able to keep going. But uh, I'm where, hoping... it, where it does get funny is when, say, your car broke, is they mm -hmm. pull up with the smart car. Yeah, so they used to do that, and that's yeah, where I'm, I'm glad that they got rid, rid of that. So now, and that's another thing, even if you're going to borrow a car, say you go to the following event, um, 
and you go to borrow a car, you actually have to borrow a race car, something that is somewhat competitive for the class, for the TV show. Because at the end of the day, it's a TV show. Yeah. So they have they want to make sure that it's, you know, somewhat entertaining. So now you can't just go out and rent your mom's minivan or go to the local dealership and pick up a Dodge Charger and come out there and race. You actually have to go out and find a race car to be able to compete. Huh. Yeah. So somebody has to do that. And that brings up the whole question is like, I know in small tire racing, mm-hmm. we have John Sears. He is like the guy that runs the rule book. I mean, he's yep. the rule guy, like the master of all that. Who's who's like, so you have um, a rule dispute. Yeah. Who makes that final call? So we've had a few people over the years and uh, it's John's the best. I grew up with John. Um, like I said, I did the radio racing growing up and and he's the best of the best. He he's makes fair. Sure, he's honest. He's with fair. It, he yep. doesn't care. He's there to do his job and that's it. And that's how it should be. There we should there should never be no favoritism or anything. And like I tell people all the time, I'm okay if I get beat by somebody because they made it down the racetrack or I wasn't able to be faster than them that day. But I don't want to get beat by a rule book and then someone throw it in my face. Don't piss in my face and say it's raining. That's how that's how I operate. Yep. So John is a very fair guy. Now to answer the question for MPK, we did have a few people that were, you know, doing rules. And I'll be the first to tell you that some of the rules, well, it, the rules were 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 set in stone, and you know everybody followed them, but it never really got checked. So now we going into this year, um, supposedly we don't know yet, but supposedly we have a new guy that's going to be handling all the rules, as in um, checking everybody's cars. They're yeah. allowed to come check it whenever they want. And I told him that's a good thing because then I don't think nobody will ever cheat. Like, I, I think the highly of everybody, especially over in MPK, I don't think anybody would ever want to get caught because that would be the most humiliating thing ever. But there has been times, I take that back now, because there was times that some people did get, like last, I think last year, uh, Sean Wilhoy got caught trying to put weight in his car at the other end of the track. And he was putting an uh, air compressor and shit inside yeah. the car, and they caught him doing it. But me personally, I would never do nothing like that. Um, so I think now they are going to enforce the rules, and they supposedly they're going to have somebody that's going to come around, check stuff. Uh, because you can you can do a lot of stuff with the turbos, the pro chargers. Mm-hmm. A screw blower, it it's kind of is what it is. There's really nothing you can do with it. You can't change nothing. You can't do that. But like a pro charger, I mean, 140 pro charger, you know, 140-X and a 136 – well, those are two different pro charters, but you can, I mean, me personally, you can uh, you could stamp a 136 as a, a 140 yeah. or vice versa, and then you get to run at different weights. A, a screw blower is just at the same weight, no different with a turbo. I mean, you got, I think, what do they got, 88s, ni- 94s? No 90- matter how big your turbo is, so all you got weight do is, doesn't matter. Well, no, there's different weights, okay. but if nobody's checking it, who's going to know what yeah. you have? racers kind of know what they got going on if someone's out there just you know completely burning the scoreboards down and and doing all that they're going to say they're going to question or whatever but i did hear that this year they are going to enforce the rules a lot more and they are going to check stuff and then every race supposedly there is going to be three to four drivers that will get selected to have to go through a full tech sheet which i think is badass I think I think they should have to go through the whole thing, and if you get caught cheating or you're outside of the rules, yep. you uh, if I read it correctly, I think you lose a whole set of points from a race. So uh, sixty points is what you can get if you win the whole race. Yeah. So you will lose the uh, or you'll get sixty points taken away from you. So that that thing or I think is going to be a badass deal for this. Yeah, year. and that's awesome. And for people that don't realize, like they don't have to check every single car that shows for up. Sure, you just check the guys that randomly. won a couple rounds. Yep. You know, if a guy's running away with the class a yep. little bit, you know, you're two races in, and you're like, okay, this car, something's going on here. Mm-hmm. We need to tech it a little bit because NHRA Pro Mod is great at that. They are really good they, at they, they, parity they... across the rules and kind of. They get, a little, they get a little carried away with it. I, I feel like is so I, I'm I'm not a big NHRA fan. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, oh, same. It it, <laughs> it it doesn't. There's nothing exciting to it. I guess you want to say. I mean, yep. once you like the top fuel and stuff. Once you've seen the first one go down, it's the same thing every time. I mean, it's no different than pro stock. Pro mod is exciting for them, uh, but like I said, or like you just said that they change the rules so much, it makes it hard. If anybody goes out there and shows 
any kind of progress, it's automatically rule change the next Monday. And that's the only thing that kind of hinders it because, and I get it, they're trying to keep parity, but like someone can't even have a little limelight for 24 hours. Like there's already a rule package coming out. Like, yeah. like they have it prepared already. So that, that changes it a little bit, but it does keep the racing a lot more fair and, and, and everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, six, one half dozen, the other, it does work out. Well, it happens in X275 too. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a lead trophy when you for win. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's the joke. Like and, congrats, here's your lead. And, and that, and that, so like for us, and that's another, I think that's a, that, that allows people to stand back. Because so like for us, we have no scoreboards. There's nothing on. We don't get no tickets at the track. Mm -hmm. We don't get scoreboards. Um, I'm sure there's maybe somebody up at the tower that probably knows what everybody runs. I don't know. We don't ask questions. Um, but uh, it we don't know what we go other than, you know, looking at our data. And then we don't know what the next person goes. So every time you see a race coming up, if I'm running Kai Kelly, if I'm running Ryan Martin, Lizzie Musi, I'm going to try to go as fast as I can, no matter what. If you, like X275, say, I think Kenny Hubbard's running extremely well right now. And, you know, he's been going, what, 414, 415? Yeah, I don't he think don't, he's lost a round in, like, for Yeah, he don't want to get years. that. He don't want to get no more lead. So he might just slow that thing down to run 420, 422, and it's just on cruise control, where over an MPK, you can't do that. You try to do cruise control, you're going to get your ass loaded up and heading home. So you want to make sure that you run fast. And I think that's a good thing because it allows everybody to run at their max performance. There's no sandbagging. There's no doing none of that to be able to, you know, hold back to be able to keep winning races in your favor. Yeah. Do you think it's the best fan experience in drag racing right now? Like Agreed. if you're a fan to go out yes. and watch some drag racing, uh, you're yes. not watching tractors the whole day. Uh, so, so that's another thing is that there's, there's very – very small downtime uh unless something like you know really crazy happens there's r usually racing all the time if it's small tire to the big tire class to the invitational to the futures or something going on where uh you go to a lot of these other events and you know they got to spend you know a couple two three hours prepping you got to do all this i could tell you right now if we have an oil down on the track they literally go out there they broom it off to the wall clean it you know half ass clean it and you better hope you're not in the burnout box because you're going down the track. That's why they call it no prep. Uh, we've had it where, you know, people have, even me, you know, wrecked a car and all that. And, and they, they make it safe, but it's still no prep. There's no, no spraying glue down. They don't get to go out there and drag the track. Yeah. They don't get to do all that. Um, and, and that's where I think it comes into good. Now, as in a fan experience, if you've never been to an MPK event, I, I don't think you have experienced, you know, a good side of drag racing. Uh, the, the, the fan base is amazing. They do watch a TV show, so they get to see it. They want to come see their celebrities, I guess you want to call us. Uh, and it's no different. Like, you know, when I, I, Dwayne, the rock Johnson or something, I, I would go watch if he had something going on because yep. I see him on TV and it's a chance to be able to meet. It's him. very WWE style yeah. where it's like. And, over the top cars in your face. And I think like that's drama. what MPK MPK does well is they they focus on the drivers and their images. No different like like you. You have a very successful YouTube channel and people out in public come and see you and hey, they know it's you because they see your face all the time. If you did every video and it was just your car and nobody ever seen you, do you think anybody would come up to you? Yeah, you wouldn't be as interesting so at all. So it's, it's definitely a, a cool thing, and I think a lot of people miss out on that and the other side of drag racing because they're so focused on, like, the cars and what's going on, and there's just no storyline there um, where MPK very m makes sure that they have a storyline, they follow the storyline, and it's all about the drivers. But the experience for an MPK race is... It's crazy. I mean, did we stack the house? There's some races we go to. There'll be 20, 25,000 fans that come in, and it's just it's through the roof. I mean, that's absolutely crazy. And, I mean, to add to it, you guys went multinational this year. For sure. Or last year, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, that to do that, to take that jump overseas. Oh, that that was that was brutal. I ain't going to lie. That was uh, the first time that they have went over there. I was glad to be invited. Uh, we went to Australia. Um I had high hopes going over there, and I mean it was a fun experience, but it's a different lifestyle over there. As in, uh, they don't believe in ice. So, so like we were there five and a half weeks. They don't believe in ice. There's no ketchup. 
I was gonna say the ketchup. So, so like when I say there's no gotta like pay for the packets. So but but our ketchup is like ketchup. Their ketchup is kind of like ketchup, but with wish sour sauce mixed. Like it just it doesn't taste good. Yep. There's no mayonnaise. They don't have pickles. Um, let's see what else. All it, the McDonald's has barbecue sauce on it. So every McDonald's <laughs> has barbecue sauce on it. The McDonald's, the only thing that's on a menu. So like, you know, I'm a big, uh, you know, burrito guy from McDonald's. I get a number 11. That's it. Yep. I, I know it by heart over there. All they have is an English McMuffin for breakfast. And then for lunch, you can either get a, a Big Mac or a McDouble. And that's it. There's nothing else on the menu. Mm-hmm. And so there's no Burger King. There's no checkers. There's nothing that. Um, the biggest thing was uh, I'm an Outback fan. Everybody kept telling me Outback's from Australia. It's not. They don't have one Outback yeah. in Australia. So I don't understand where people got that from, that you know Outback is is from Australia, but it's not. But uh, um, another thing is, is they got they got curfews over there. So like when we were racing – Everything shuts down at that. When we went to Sydney, it was open later. But the other events that we went to, everything shuts down at nine o'clock. So if we're at the racetrack past nine, you can't go to a gas station. You can't go to a restaurant. You can't do nothing. If you didn't eat, you're screwed. You got to wait till the next day because everything shuts down. So they just they just live a different lifestyle. Well, like the towing side of things and mm-hmm. like the trucks that we have, you know, we're so used to like. You just hook up. Everybody's got a pickup truck. You just hook up to your trailer. They, they don't. They don't even have those over there. Oh, they tow with some sketchy they, they stuff. Call, what do they call them? Utes. Them Utes. Yeah, Utes. And uh, um, they, there's there's no. I didn't see not one Ford. No dually. Mm-hmm. No, there's not a gooseneck trailer. There's nothing. Um, their their roads are narrower than ours, so their trailers are narrower, and you can just tell that um, whoever builds the trailers or whatever, they're they're just. They're just not up to the par that we got over here. And, um, I mean, it was a fun experience. It was awesome. I would do it again, but now I'd be more prepared. I, I know what I'm getting myself into because it's just a different lifestyle over there. And, like, I could explain to people, if you could remember what it was like over here 15 years ago, it's kind of what it's like there. They're just behind time from what we got going on over here. There's some areas, like Perth, they're behind 20 years. Like, on, like, the drag racing or in, on anything. culture? everything like everything in life from, yeah. from you know walking outside i mean there's pay phones i mean that's just everything is so ancient and old over there especially me i'm younger so i didn't even know about a lot of stuff yeah. but um that's just how it is and i'm sure like whenever they travel over here i'm sure it's probably weird for them the food's probably weird the stuff we do over here is weird but you know we're so used to living a lifestyle over here it's actually pretty humbling when you go over there and, and it, like the meat, the the steak, I bet you I spent, I probably spent a little over $5,000 the whole time I was there trying to find a good steak to eat. And I didn't find not one. Like it, it it's just, their food is different. It's, it's yeah. different food over there. But I can tell you this, I didn't see not one fat person. They yep. don't, they don't have uh, the processing that we got over here and they, mm-hmm. they make it very clear over there. They're, they don't put the stuff in their food that we got over here. And it's actually, and I mean, that's a cool thing, but I think if you, you know, you lived over there, you would be able to get used to it and eat it more. But there were some times we were brutal. I, I lost 17 pounds just being over there. And you you were only over there for a couple of weeks, five, right? Five and a half weeks. Five and a half weeks. I mean, that's crazy. So it's it's definitely a different world over there. Their tracks crazy. are nice. Sydney's a beautiful track. Beautiful tracks. That's one Great thing I can't say is that, is that the tracks were phenomenal. And every track had a, what do they call them, a jumbotron? That, that was, oh, yeah. That's yeah. the best thing I've ever seen. You were able to just watch it as people go down the track and everything. So every track had one of those, and it was a it was a cool experience. There's just some things that I was just a little wearied about. Those fans over there, too, are definitely um, definitely about it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we went to, uh, I think it was w- Willow Banks, I think is what it's called. Mm-hmm. And that was probably the most rowdy place. I'm talking about even compared to over here, like, there were so many fans there, and then uh, whenever you know an Australian racer would win a race or whatever, they would go crazy. I'm talking about you know throwing beer cans everywhere, from kicking the bleachers. I mean, it was like you yeah. were in the middle of a fucking stadium. That's how that's how big it was, and that's one thing I could say that that really doesn't happen over here. I mean, it, a lot of people you know clap and everything, but like these people were going crazy when it happened. So that was. That was a cool experience to be able to see what that. What was the split? Like how many U.S. racers versus Australian racers? Ten, ten and ten. So ten and was, ten. there was nine of us, and Boosted was our uh, race master. He was the one who was setting up our grudge races. Yep. So it made it ten people. But uh, it was us ten versus them. 
Boosted seems to do an awesome job at being like he does. I tell people all the time that is a hard job. Uh, last year there was a couple times throughout the races I would go out there and talk on the mic and everything, and then I'd have to leave and go back and get my car ready. And I love doing that because I love. I'm very big about the fan base and uh, hanging out with my fans and, uh, you know, just being able to talk shit with them and give away stuff and just be able to interact. Um, but I tell people all the time, Boost has probably got the hardest job. He has to stand out there in the middle of the sun all day long and try to entertain people. While all of his friends are racing. While all his friends are racing and try to keep the crowd entertained. That's probably one of the biggest things yep. is you don't want to get the crowd down. There's times like we do have an oil down or um, – Say, you know, one of us hurts a motor, they will give us a little bit more time. He's got to make up for that. So there's times you'll see him, like, they do foot races. He uh, he does T-shirt launches and uh, just all kinds of stuff to be able to keep it entertained. So I do give uh, uh, Chris uh, Boosted a pat on the back, and he, he, he makes sure that the crowd stays entertained. Yeah, it's pretty cool that they've used him instead of just kind of finding some for sure some random and, person and you wouldn't be able to known. just get some random people there there's a few of them that try to get on the mic mm -hmm. and they can't do it um i was a little nervous when i first did got on the mic i i i felt like i did a good job and a lot of people were talking about it on social media about how good it was and and i i loved the experience and it was cool and i'm gonna do some things this year i got some stuff lined up for the fans whenever we mm -hmm. go to the events for every event we go to we are going to do something for the fans um so just try to keep people you know, coming back, and if this is their first race, make sure the experience is good for them. They're going to tell other people, and it's just going to grow our deal to make it bigger. Yeah, next year they'll come out to the exactly. same track with four people instead for of sure. the two. It's almost like the way I was explained it by Spencer, who announces all Garrett's races. He yep. was like, I kind of prepare like a stand-up comedy. You have to. You, like, have a routine in a way where... And, you can and fall back onto something if you need to. It, uh, uh, I agree with that, too. And and there's been times that I've seen boosted. He he has to get prepared for it. I mean, a lot of stuff he shoots off the side of his hip. That's where I say yep. I think he is a perfect person for the job because even if something goes wrong, he doesn't he doesn't let it affect him. He goes ahead and changes the mood. He got everything rolling forward, and it, it, we keep moving smoothly. So that's a good thing about it. But there is times that he prepares for certain things, and they have a schedule on how they're going to run stuff, and, and they, they keep moving forward with it. Yeah, it seems like you guys do pretty well at keeping to a schedule because back to radial racing, mm -hmm. if they make a schedule, it's usually behind schedule after round one. I, I tell, I, I can agree with that. Uh, there's a lot of races that I've been to over uh, over my, what is this, I think 13 years of racing. Um, but uh, the, the schedule is to a T at MPK, and they don't care who you are. If you don't meet the schedule, if they tell me, hey, you are going to go down to track at 748, you better be up there ready in the burnout box to go down to track at 748. If something happens, they're going to let you know, hey, we got a five or 10 minute buffer, but you would go, if not, you go back to your trailer. We'll see you the next round. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. And and it keeps everybody honest. And uh, there's no, like, there's like a lot of the radio races I see people trying to, you know, trying to run each other over to get to the staging lanes to be able to get up there first. That's not like that. They We have first four get called up, say, at 3 o'clock. The next four get called up at 310. The next four get called up at 320. And they are very, very precise on their scheduling. Yeah, and with no qualifying, you're not, like, Without like mm -hmm. time slips or anything like that, you're not worried about like, oh, I need my, you know, perfect DA. I'm going to wait till midnight for sure. Vampire mode, as they well, call it. And that's it. where I said about the no prep. The no mm -hmm. prep is awesome because you don't need the perfect condition. You don't mm -hmm. need the, the the excellent prep on the track. Does it make it better? Sure. Is there some tracks we go to that's just perfect by themselves? Uh, of course. But we can really go down anywhere. And you see a lot on, on the street. I mean, those guys, I haven't ran my car on the street uh, with the big tire wheelie bar set up. I did get to go out to one of the filmings and watch them. And even out there on the street, I have seen some of the passes. You know, they'd run 419 to 420 out on a street. Yeah. And that That's, to me, that's that's crazy how fast I got to watch. I mean, I watched Lizzie hang out four-foot flames going down a two-lane road, going down the track, yeah. or not even track, going down the street. That's and nutty. where Ryan was right beside her with a Pro Charger combo, just letting it rip. So that that was a little sketchy for me because I've never been in that experience. But uh, that's one thing I can say is that the, the prep doesn't really matter on the surface where we're at. Most of the time, you're going to go down the track or – you just, you know, missed a tune up and you may smoke the tires or something. But for the most part, everybody at MPK uh, makes it entertaining. 
I like the idea of at the track because you get the level of safety, you get the walls, you get me like, too. Even uh, just watching it yep. as somebody who races, I'm like, I don't, I, I don't get any extra joy knowing that they're in a more dangerous situation. So, um, and and I'm the same way. I tell people all the time, I'm not a street racer, and and I and even you know 405, even the guys at MPK, they know I'm not a street racer. And I did just go do my first street event in November. Um, was it fun? Yes. That was out in Vegas, right? It, uh, no, it was uh, in California. Oh, California. Um, it was the, probably one of the best times I've had racing. It was amazing. It was fun. Uh, I can't talk a whole lot about it because the show's not aired yet, but uh, it, it was a cool experience to be able to go out and do it. But the reason why I went and did it is I felt like that's where my branding and everything had to move to. So, yes, is it dangerous? Of course it is. And But we know what we're getting ourselves into mm-hmm. by going out there and doing it. Um, at the racetrack... I I feel I am more safer. You're in between the walls. You got stuff that's going on. And there's some tracks that we go to where we, we've I'd be the first to complain about it. I ain't going to lie that they would try to make it so un no prep that it would it would kind of make it dangerous. Like they were doing so much to be able to make it a non prep surface where when I think of no prep, you you just don't prep the track. So whatever the whatever the track is, just yeah. leave it there. If you want to scrape it, that's cool. But I mean, dude, we were put they were putting soap down. They were putting they were bringing in wash trucks and they were washing the track and everything. And that made it a little dangerous. And they kind of they kind of got away from that. And because the cars are getting so much faster in the beginning yeah. of the seasons, they weren't that fast. But do these cars now are running three seventies? And a lot of people that don't believe that. They're delusional because they are. They 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 run three seventy to three eighties uh, to three ninety class. That's where that is, and it, it's that's wild. It, it's got to be somewhat safe to be able to run those numbers. I mean, these cars are going two hundred mile an hour through the eighth mile, and it is it is sketchy. I've seen some cars, you know, be sideways coming through the eighth mile, and you know have to pull the chutes and be able to you know straighten the car out. Um, I tell you who's. Who's got bigger balls than we do is the small tire guys, the small tire guys on a no prep surface or like, I don't know if you all watch the the back of the track stuff. Yep. So the back of the track stuff, that stuff is uh, pretty interesting. It seems like it's a hot deal. It's keep on growing, getting bigger. Yeah, like but, war in the woods. Those yeah. Kind of races. So the small tire no prep that, that they run at our events. Dude, I've seen two cars completely look at each other while going through the finish line, and and they're on they're only allowed a ten inch tire, so they're on a very small tire back there. Yep. And at least with my setup, you know, we were allowed a thirty six inch tire um, on a seventeen five, and you know, we had a big tire to be able to help you know get the cars to go down the track. Of course, we're going faster, but the, those cars, the small tires, I bet you they're still running four fifties to four seventies on the no prep surface, so. It, it's it's pretty it gets pretty sketchy on yeah that's deals. a lot i mean those guys are definitely wild you have a lot of like give and yes. your chassis is obviously designed for that mm-hmm. where they're in you know a stock oh, for sure chassis that's not exactly designed for that and then they don't have like the team and the testing and the ability to really dial in for that either and then the, as much as you guys kind of do I, I, no i agree they don't they don't they don't do it for a living. I guess you want to say that. Yeah. They don't do it for a living. And that sometimes it gets people in trouble because they've never been on a no prep surface. And then they come out there and say the car's out there smoking the tires or, you know, it got too much wheel speed. And it'll turn them around in a heartbeat and put them mm-hmm. in the wall. It sucks when that happens. I never like to see that happen. But there's some times where, you know, a driver be, you know, two, three hundred foot out and the car's just getting stupid and they stay in the throttle to try to get to the finish line. And then all of a sudden they're in the wall, um, which that that's no good. But it's it's part of it even some of the big tire guys that come out there we've i've seen a couple pro mods that try to come out there and thought they were just gonna you know molly wop the field and come out there and just yeah. run through it. they can't even leave the starting line because it's not the same as running like a pro mod event or a prep surfaced event or they would come out there and you know put it in the wall and and then be, but and then that's what makes it dangerous but you ha- you know what you get whenever you sign up for. well everybody thinks that they're like a driver they're like yeah. oh i'll drive I'll drive out of any I, issue or anything like that. I hear, I hear that all the time. A lot like, of heroes the internet, out there. Monday Monday morning quarterbacks, and yep. you know, I could do this. I could do that. I I hit the wall a couple times last year. Um, well, only three times. One was I got ran into. Uh, I you know I pulled the chutes. I was at the other end, and uh, David Atkins come across the track and hit me in the quarter panel. So that one was there. The second one 
was when I was in Colorado. Uh, it had just got done raining. So, like, when it rains, all they do is broom the track off. There's no going out there spraying it or dragging it. They're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Um, so we broomed the track off, and I was in the burnout box. So I had to make a pass. So when I made my pass, you know, I shook the tires about 100 foot. Well, the problem was I was at the top of first gear. And it's something that I learned. If I would have just put the car in, you know, second, third, and threw it in neutral, it would have calmed the car down. That was when you had a turbo 400, right? Yes. Okay. So when it was caught up in first gear, you know, it was still torque. Even though I was off the throttle, it was trying to lunge the car because mm -hmm. it was, you know, down in low gear. Well, I was just going back and forth, back and forth. I had the chutes pulled and everything, and it finally just nudged over and, and rubbed into the wall. And then uh, the third one was when I was in Texas. And I made a full pass against Lizzie. I pulled the chutes and uh, just passed the quarter mile. And out of nowhere, the car just slid. But I think that was on us because I had moved from the Pro Charger to the screw. And uh, when I did that, it changed the weight off the rear of the car. And oh, I had those big chutes, and I feel like it picked the car up and yeah. it just slid. Um, so now we got everything under situated. I, I've, I've done a lot better. Yeah, you can move some weight around and yeah. stuff, try to try to get things right. Yeah, that's that's tough where you kind of end in into a back-to-back -back racing where you don't yeah. have as much time to go test and make sure all that stuff's good. For sure. Because you got to go 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 and what was the what was the concept behind switching from Pro Charger to the uh what is it? Roots? I always get mixed screw. up with screw and roots. So I I'm not I'm not too good as in knowing what the difference is. The only way I can tell you is that uh a roots blower is a lot longer. Mm -hmm. So a screw blower is a little bit shorter and you can actually look at the hats. If you see the real flat top hat, usually it's a screw. And then, you know, kind of a pointier hat is a, uh, as a roots, but I don't know the difference on how they work. Yeah. I'm pretty ignorant on that stuff. It's, so, it's a little out of my, uh, yeah, it's, realm. At, it's out, it's out of my league. Um, but uh, I do run a screw. The reason why I switched over to the screw was, uh, I was breaking a lot of pro chargers. I ain't gonna lie. I was knocking out coming back to the schedule. It makes it hard because I was knocking out three or four pro chargers a weekend. When you go to fix those, you know, you send them in, shout out the pro charger. They, they were able to get my stuff in and get it back out to me, but you know, I was still having to pay. I was, dude, I was paying 1500 to 2,500 per pro charger for times four. Yep. It costs $700 to ship one of them to them. Oh, so thanks. do 700 times four. So I ended up spending just a little over $52,000 for one season on just pro charger repair bills from shipping and yeah. repairing. And then I find, I just told my dad, I can't race like this. We, for some, and I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the four that I had. They just weren't working out. I don't know, but they just, they continue to keep breaking. Um, they would touch down in the burnout box. They would touch down after they made a pass. Like, and it was, it was bad. So I said, you know what, I'm going to switch over to the screw and knock on wood. I haven't hurt one yet. I haven't done nothing, but hmm. I've been to what? nine ten races a couple test sessions and i'm golden yeah, and it just came down of, to a money thing yep and there's plenty of people making the pro chargers work so For it's sure. nothing truly against pro charger you guys just no, no. didn't have luck with them i just didn't have luck your with combo them. and and I, I couldn't keep spending the money and it, it's like it, i would make a hundred foot pass i'd make a 330 i'd make an eighth mile or the burnout the worst thing and i lost two races this way was when i would do a burnout and they would break in the burnout and that you couldn't even make a pass. Yeah. So that was that was a hard deal because I had a fast car and and they were extremely fast. I mean, Ryan Martin runs a pro charger and he's won the last three championships. They work. I just didn't have good luck with them. And I and I left off, you know, good terms. I said, hey, I, I'm making a switch. I can't spend this kind of money. I don't have the money like that to be able to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. So I switched over to a screw and it's probably the best thing I ever did. I I as in a combo. Like, if I would have knew the screw was this fun, I would have did it, you know, five, six years ago whenever we run. I mean, the screw blower is such a fun combo. To There's run. something awesome about just a big screw blower on it's, the top of a car, it, whopping the throttle like it's that. It's just, it's 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 nerve-wracking. Like, uh, Kai Kelly just switched over to a screw blower, and he, he calls me. Uh, we, we go back and forth, but we probably talk about three or four times a week. But he's a little nervous getting in. And I told him, I said, bro, you're going to be fine. Like, you drive a nitrous car, you, you tune a nitrous car. Nitrous combo is the hardest combo out there to tune. Yep. I feel like a Pro Charger and a screw, a turbo combo is, is a difficult combo to tune as well. A Pro Charger and a screw is a lot more simpler. A screw blower, I think, is probably the most simple one. Um, but uh, 
like Kai, I told him, I said, bro, you're going to be fine. Well, he went out, he did his first test session, did his burnout, did everything, called me back up. He's like, dude, this is the best thing ever. And that's why I try to tell people, unless you've been in the car and to be able to experience, it's hard to be able to, it's hard for me to tell you what the experience is like, but the best way I can announce it. And the same thing I told Kai was, I don't care if you're going four twenties, you feel like you're going three fifties. Yeah. Like in, and, and, and I run fast. A lot of the other guys, they run fast on their combos, but no matter what's going on, it's just, it's such, it's a beast that makes 45 pounds of boost like that. So it, it, it's amazing deal. And I, I don't think I will ever switch. I mean, no matter what combo comes or anything, I'll stay with the screw. The best description I ever got was just, it's violence. It is. It's just violent. Like when you get up on the chip, it's just like chaos. So, so I've had, a, I've had every fans, combo. That's what. Oh, they I love mean, it. Yeah. They, that's love what it. It's I mean, all I, about. Like I, I do the throttle wops whenever we're in the pits and everything. I mean, mm-hmm. I let kids fire up the car. Um, I, I try to, I try to wop the throttle while they're in the car just to get their, to, to have the experience good for them. They're going to take that and they'll never forget it. Um, but, uh, it, it, it's, it's crazy. Like I've been in every combo. So like a nitrous combo, when it leaves the starting line, it's, it's for about 150 foot, you know, you're feeling it and then you're just along for the ride. Yeah. There's nothing more to it. You're all in on a nitrous car. That's for it. people that don't realize, you have to be 100% yeah, there's all no, in. There's no gradually bringing the power in. Like, it's yep. just there. Um, a pro charger car, it probably goes out about 200, 250 foot, and then you're along for the ride. There's no more to it. It's done, you know, it's done peaked out and you're just there to the mm-hmm. finish line. Uh, a turbo car, I feel, I've never been in like a fast one, but... I, I do have friends that run it. They make their power at the end of the track. They don't really run, you know, two good numbers down low, and they'd be able to make their power. Yeah. With a screw blower, it pulls the whole way. When you let go of the button, like I said, you got 45 pounds of boost ready to go, and as long as you ain't shaking the tires or doing anything, I don't care, 100 foot, 300 foot, 500 foot, at the eighth mile, you could keep running it past eighth mile. It continues to pull. You know, the the tunnel vision, the, the vision gets blurry. I mean, there's so much stuff that's going on uh, inside the car, and I tell people all the time, even though I love it, I'm ready to get out of the car at the other end because it, it's, a, it's a beast. It's an animal that, that just wants to be unleashed. Did you notice, like, a harmonics difference in there like yes like just like shakes everything and so, like rattling so from the pro charger to the screw blower uh of course uh a screw blower completely shakes everything loose like yeah. just firing up and letting it idle um after a pass my guys go through the whole car we check you know you check the throttle linkage we check the transmission bolts converter bolts um the where the struts bolt in the steering rack because if you don't it stuff continues to get loose. It's just, it's so much vibration inside the car that, and that's the reason why like all our electronics, we have to put our electronics on like rubber grommets and everything Mm -hmm. when they're bolted in, because when there's so much vibration, it allows them to isolate and float back and forth. If they're a permanent piece, I feel like I've heard, I've never had one happen, but I did hear that if they're like permanently bolted, that it will mess up the electronics. And that's the reason why like the FT spark, the FT dash, all my electronics in the car all have rubber grommets behind them that allows them to be able to float around with all the vibration that happens. Yeah, I think people don't realize the oh, it's, the violence. And then you probably used lockup too. Uh, which... So I did at one time. I have uh, on a pro charger. I haven't ran yeah. a lockup with a screw blower. Um, our rule set they make us carry a hundred pounds for the lockup, so it's not worth it for the yeah. numbers. Um, so yes, I run a non lockup because the lockup makes everything even that much yep. elevated. Oh, it's harder it's, on things. It's crazy. I would love to be able to run the screw blower setup with a lockup just to try it one time because probably be spicy. It it would definitely be it would definitely be fast. I ain't gonna lie because I know my pro charger was you know so much faster with the mm-hmm. lockup setup. Um, but uh, it it would definitely be. But a that hundred pounds is a tough decision. Yeah, it's you not take worth hundred pounds. Yeah, it's not worth it for uh for the ET on yeah. the, so on our combos. About 50 pounds is worth about a number and a half. So, so you know, like a thou. Yeah. Yeah. So like or if 100. I, if I, uh, if I was to go an 80, you know, if you put 50 pounds in it, you'd go, you know, 81, 82, somewhere in there. So a hundred pounds, you know, you're, you're three numbers behind say yeah. just, just by having that the same, same setup. That's not meaning that like, you know, they can't be faster. You can't be faster, but weight for weight. They are, there is a difference. So it's just not worth it to carry that hundred pounds. And you'd probably break more parts being heavier and using a lockup. 
Yep. Where and it wouldn't offset it because that 100 pounds is going to be a lot harder oh, on it everything. Is. It is. And also a lockup is is not as forgiving as a non lockup. I mean, you can go out there and lug a motor down and, you know, spit every rod out of the engine. And and the screw blower is a lot, I would say, is a lot harder on it. I mean, Stevie Jackson is one of the best out there. You know how many times he's grenaded motors and all that, and he that radio versus the world. And He'll he, tell you about it too. He, he's not shy about it. He's not about it, and 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 that's why he wins so much. But at the end of the day, it is harder on stuff. When you hear that motor grunt down mm-hmm. it, inside there, it's just pissed off, ready to go. Yeah, and if you're running quarter, maybe I could see it a little mm-hmm. bit more necessary. But you have such a short window in the eighth mile stuff. You know, I run quarter where you kind of have all this time in the back to think about things. You have very little time. It's sure. all instinct. I've never ran quarter mile. I tell people all the time. I see y'all do it. I see Cletus does it. Gets boring. <laughs> I've, I've, I've never ran a quarter mile pass. So I don't know. Like, I mean, yes, I you know, shut myself off and cruise, and I probably go, I don't know, 6.30s to. I watched you the other day testing. Oh, down Bradenton? Yeah. I, so I, you rolled to like a 6.50 at yeah. 1.40. I so, was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, what, what, and, and not like that, but I've never made a full pull to the quarter mile. And I don't know if I will do it just because it, it's hard to explain. But, oh, do we have enough problems just trying to get to the eighth mile? And there's yeah. so much shit going on. I couldn't even experience going a whole nother one. <laughs> to It'd be have able to be a fairly long track. Yeah. So, like, and, and there's people at like the Pro Mod guys, NHRA, now they run that. Or sometimes, you know, Stevie, Lyle Barnett, and them, they run quarter mile. And I give it to them because. It, you got to be a one. You got to be a driver to be able to do that, especially in a car that's that fast and stuff that can happen. And mm-hmm. man, I, I'm so ready to get out of the car that I, I I'm ready to pull the chutes, shut the car off, put it in neutral, and just hold the steering wheel and coast to the other end. So yeah, I don't see any need to try to make a fast car yeah. run quarter. I I was explained it by uh, Don Lamont at one point. He was like, he's like the fast guys are trying to run less. Yeah less track well it's 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 you less, don't need more it, it's a lot less on parts mm-hmm. probably, it doesn't hurt stuff as much i mean like you said the weight you got to think you're basically getting two passes compared to one hit to yep. the eighth mile so um that that definitely plays a factor and I, there was a lot of people that asked me if i would ever go run nhra or do none of that i'm so in with you know no prep kings and street outlaws and growing the brand and helping them grow their brand that, that i'll never leave i'm 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 yeah. stuck here and, and keep moving out with it and, you know, doing my social medias, doing my YouTube channel and everything. Uh, but uh, I don't think you'll ever see me run quarter mile with those style cars just because I, I don't even know. I don't even think I could do it. I, You'd be or, shutting it off early on accident. I, I'm, to be honest with you, I, I, I don't think I could do it. I don't blame you at all. I mean, my quarter mile and your quarter mile are completely different realms of yeah. drag racing. Like my car in the quarter mile doesn't even mile an hour what your car what, does. What do y'all run in the quarter I only go like 175. Gotcha. So like my, but it's probably, probably more fun for y'all. I, I so like you said, we were just out testing, and I, I seen y'all out there. I seen Cletus out there, and I told my dad, I said, dude, we're in, we're in the wrong business. Like we're out here busting our ass. It's 95 degrees out, and y'all are over there smoking hamburgers on the grill, kicking a windshield out of a fucking van, and yeah. just having the time of y'all's life. You guys so, preparing for 20 back-to-back races. Dude, <laughs> we're, we're over here, you know, making a pass, have to come back, spend an hour maintenancing, getting everything mm-hmm. ready, and y'all done took all 12 cars and made three laps each, and so I, I, was, I was excited to be able to see y'all out there doing that, you know, putting them on the rev chips, doing burnouts. That yep. was a cool deal. And and I want to get more into that too. I mean, what I do is fun. I love doing what I do. The experience is awesome. Hanging out with the fans is amazing. Um, being able to meet people, that's the best thing about my job. But I do want to do some more stuff. Like I want to get into that burnout contest. I want to build something. And, yeah. and we plan on doing something this year. You got a big blower already. So, and that's where I, I want to be able to, you know, have more fun and experience it and, and get more, I guess you want to say back to reality. Um, I'm big on people having to relate to it. Like I had that little white twisted T Mustang I had. It had a little LS in it. Yep. Probably the best car that I had because it didn't cost me nothing. I could literally drive it, you know, to the track if I wanted to, make a pass, drive it back home. I mean, oil change is like 30 bucks. So it, it wasn't to it where the car that I have now, it to run up front where we run and doing everything, it's, it's, 
it's something sickening because you spend so much money and 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 I make I make good money now. I, I doing my social medias, my merch. Merch is really what keeps me going. The fan base buying up all the merch, yep. and that's why buy some merch, guys. Yeah, you buy some merch. JustinSwanstrom.com or Swangang.com. JustinSwanstrom69.com. There you go. Um, so I, I tell people all the time that's what keeps the things going, and I put everything back into my programs. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's not uh, me personally. I don't think there's point one percent that could go out and buy my car, my setup. Mm -hmm. And that's not a dagger at anybody. And it's cool to be able to watch it, but that's just an honest deal. That little white Mustang I had, I went 476 in it and I had $29,000 in it. Yep. Everybody. A lot could, of people can do that. A lot of people could go do that. So it's more relatable. So we are going to, even though I'm still going to do MPK and I love MPK and travel and everything this year, I plan on doing some other little small stuff yep. to be able to, be more relatable and we're doing our first giveaway this year we're going to have that coming up at the end of the year um i want to do a burnout car uh just to be able to you know hit up the events as long as it mm -hmm. doesn't uh conflict with our schedule that we got going on that we'll be able to knock it out but we have some pretty cool stuff happening this well year. even street outlaws is trying to do the same thing that you're just saying because mm -hmm. they're you know they're working with um my buddy jared holt okay. on setting up the small tire stuff they yep. just they just announced they just did what five episodes of small tire street racing where it was you had to drive to the track you had to drive to the street so, and, and that's where like I, real style i don't uh they, they don't tell us nothing so i don't know nothing about what other than like the mpk stuff yeah um i try to stay focused on that but that, that i think that's a, a cool deal it's something that relates that people can look at that and be like hey i could possibly do that or mm -hmm. i could go out and buy this and go do that with them so it's all a relating theme and well the car that won was an all-wheel drive honda civic nice so it's like so, and that's really like oh it's anybody not, can have that yeah it's not some nova that has tube chassis underneath yeah. it or something crazy like that it's like it was a freaking honda civic and, and that's where it's relatable and and people i think people eat that up and and it makes it better so I have this year I focused on my merch, focusing on, you know, changing some things around to be able to have more fun with the fans. We are doing a giveaway. I am I got some stuff happening in the next couple months with uh, trying to get fan experience to come out to an MPK event um, to be able to, you know, help work on the car, do all that and just try to make the experience funner for everyone. Yeah, that's definitely huge. And then back to what you were saying was like 0.1 percent of people. Mm hmm. The people that could buy it are one thing. The people that could manage a program and yes. run a program is a whole, a whole other whole world. different whole different ball game. R racing the car is like one percent of owning a car. Mm -hmm. Like going down track is a yeah, very there, small portion of it. There's so much that goes into owning a program, and I would have never thought that I would be at this point where where I got going on. I mean, and I got another. We'll go ahead and just announce it. So next year. I plan on doing a rental operation. Mm -hmm. I want to, um, I've always wanted to, I own my race team, but I've always wanted to own, you know, like a full team of like multiple cars. Yep. Um, so we are having a 69 Camaro built right now. Uh, Todd with Hormone Logics, he's one of my main sponsors. We teamed up and I told him, I said, let's go in partners. Let's do this deal. Um, I want to rent out an operation for next year. Basically, okay. uh, you know, someone will have to pay, you know, a rental fee, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and we have everything in contract set in stone. They will be able to fly in, drive, do all that, and fly back out. Ooh. And that's not a very uncommon thing in the yeah. world of racing. For people that don't realize, a lot of teams do that in pro mod, in drifting. People do that. Like it's fairly like normal thing. So you're some people may be like, "Oh, that's crazy." He's, yeah. You know, he's gonna let some random person. It's not gonna be some well, random person. Yeah, no, it won't be a random person. You, they'll have to pass certain deals and and uh, be be good for the sport and mm -hmm. for MPK uh, moving forward. Um, but uh, I think it'll be a cool experience, and it's it's just another stepping stone for me. Like I mm -hmm. said, I will handle everything. I will get them. I'll have a crew. I'll have you know the maintenance. Everything's done. They literally all they got to do is just fly in and drive. Now, if they want to be a part of it, you know, help work on it, they could definitely do that. Not not saying they can't do that. That's that's going to be a, a something we talk about in the further deal. I got a few people that's willing to do it, and you never know. I may turn it into something. I may you know have three or four cars that's doing it. I mean, that's what my goal is to be able to move forward with it. So we'll see how it works. Yeah, and out. then you could get into the point where you know events are hiring for mm -hmm. exhibition runs. I mean, yep. I just I was at TX2K. Odom was there. Yep. 
doing exhibition runs just because the promoters felt that was cool enough mm-hmm. to pay him for the fan experience. Oh, for sure. And I I don't know the logistics behind it. It mm-hmm. seemed pretty cool. I mean, he was running fastest passes of the event pretty much. Gotcha. And I I don't I don't really keep up with it, so I couldn't I couldn't tell you. <laughs> it was just there at TX2K. They were bragging about fastest GTI oh, in the world and stuff like gotcha. that. Gotcha. <laughs> um, that whole that whole debate was coming up. <laughs> I, I've seen a little bit of that on social media about, you know, the fastest GTR. And, and I tell people all the time, like, John, John's got a fast car. I mean, is it is it a true GTR? It, it, the shell is. Yeah, it's the definitely shell, not a no, GTR. I, like, I don't, I don't tell people I have a true Lexus. I don't. Mm-hmm. Is the shell a Lexus? Yes. I bought it from a junkyard stock OEM fenders. Everything on the car itself is stock OEM, you know, uh, based off of that. The front end, the doors are carbon fiber and all that. But I don't tell people, hey, I got the fastest Lexus because I don't. It's just that's just the body style of it. You take that body off that car and it is a pro mod underneath. It is a 25.2 chassis. It has a 4,000 horsepower screw blower. It's got a $17,000 three-speed yep. lockup transmission in it. It's got a $12,000 rear end behind it. I mean, that it's nothing that a Lexus. And so I do see them kind of, you know, push that that narrative out there. It's the fastest GTR. And it's I think not. it's just for joking around. It but. is, but at some point, like even me, I'm like, at, you just get tired of seeing yeah. it. But, uh, and, and it, it's a good... It's a good uh, promoting aspect on their end. I'm not hating it by no means because people are watching it. People are commenting on it. People are questioning it, and Mm -hmm. it works out. It works out good in his favor. So if it's working, keep knocking out with it. Yeah, and they're, like you were saying, a couple cars Mm -hmm. go together, and that was what allows you to do a a deal aside from No Preps King and get paid to go out and exhibition run your car. Yep. which opens the door for you doing something similar and having and, more. And that's my game plan. And, but, and I also, I mean, I'm going to put somebody in a, the futures class and, and, and it's going to, there's a lot of people that want to, yeah, what is the futures class? So the futures is uh, basically is, is a group of racers that will race. I started out in futures um, and it gives the, the, the higher ups an idea to watch, to see how you race, how you interact on camera, how you interact with other drivers, and if they want to bring you up to the invitational race. Um, I got brought up my fifth race in, and I was pretty lucky. The the I got in at the right time. I, you know, I, I I put in my races. I did that. I felt like you know, coming from a grudge background, I I was able to talk shit. I was able to grudge race. I was able to you know gamble some money, and they liked that for the show. Because at the end of the day, it's a TV show. First, we just so happily race in the middle of the show so that's what i try to explain to people it's not about the racing it is to a racer to me i want to win i want to win the championship and do it but i also know it is a show first so if there's no good reality if there's no good storyline nobody's going to watch it nobody's going to watch just two cars go down the track every single time it's got to have a storyline behind it it's got to have drama i mean a lot of these tv shows um i like i'm a big fan of back in the day i don't know if you watched it, it was jersey shore I, I used to watch that yep. all the time. Had everything. You had, you know, you know, the fights, the clubs, the females, the drama, the yeah. the love life. And the people love that. And and that's where I think we we do the same thing where, you know, we got the boys, the girls, the fights, the 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 drama, the racing, and, and everybody's a part of it. And there's a lot of people that go, Well, it's scripted. And I'll go ahead and clear that up now. Nothing is scripted on the show or doing everything that we got going on. What I try to tell people is, is you got to imagine if you had, say, 10 cameras following you around all day long, you're at the racetrack. That's 10 cameras would be able to pick up every piece of footage that happened to you Mm -hmm. throughout the day. If you have a story like, hey, you went to the bathroom, something happened to the bathroom. You come back and you tell your family, you tell your friends, hey, this is what happened. Well, they have so many cameras on us that they just catch the footage. So everything that you see happens uh legitimately and everything and you just have cameras there that catch it and i think that's where it comes into play a lot, a lot of people are like oh it's scripted nothing is scripted we all run our races any of the drama that you see the fights pat musey's fight jerry bird's fight and all that that stuff happens just somebody was there to be able to catch mm-hmm. it with a camera i know when i get there there is four cameras designated just for me don't matter where i go if i walk up to the starting line if i go to the end of the track Four cameras follow me around yep. the whole entire time. That's 
wild. And 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 it makes it weird at on a certain aspect because there's sometimes you kind of got to watch what you're saying. Yeah. You because somebody's listening to you at all times. We are mic'd yeah, up. Yeah, you're mic'd up. 24 7, and you have cameras that's following you. Well, around. you could do a lot with editing too, is what people it's, don't realize. Like, for sure. Okay, maybe. To you, it didn't look that serious, but then they can edit it with some hard cuts and, and a little oh, music, yeah. and then all of a sudden, so, it looks like some crazy thing happened. So, and, and that's where I tell people all the time, there's a lot of people that get on my case. They're like, oh, you're an asshole, you're this and that, and I'm really not. Like, I, I think I'm probably the most genuine, level down type person. I love If you like to have fun, we will get along. Uh, uh, if you're not, you know, some stuck-up person or try to be little people— then uh, we're good. I can have fun with anybody. If you like racing, we we can be best friends. Um, but there's sometimes that the show, how they edit things, you know, I, I got to be the heel. And, and I, I'm okay with that because I know what I do as a person. I know what I do as social media. And, and I, I, I sleep good at night. I'm all right with that. But there's sometimes on the show and I'll be like, God damn, they... Dude, they made me out to look just like an asshole. Like, yeah, like, like the villain kind and of. I'm they like, need that. And and there and like you said, there's cuts. Like they won't talk about the 30 seconds that led up to me saying, you know, screw you, blah blah blah. They they don't see the other half of it. All they see is what they see on the show right there. Yeah. So um, a lot of people do, you know, question that. But I'm okay with it. It's part of my job. It's what I get paid to do. Um, and, and moving forward with it. And for the most part, they, they do look out for us. They, they, uh, they make sure, you know, we don't do nothing wrong. If we ever have any issues, um, they're the first ones that we can call, uh, to be able to, you know, get us out of trouble as in, uh, to be able to make sure that we stay on the right path. And that's one thing I do like is that they are very big about, uh, making sure that, you know, the brand stays growing, keeps moving forward. And if you are, you know, acting up or fucking up, they're they're going to go ahead and nip it in the butt. They want to make sure that everything stays smooth. Yeah, I was wondering about that, because obviously when you're on TV, you have a lot of FCC rules and stuff yep. like that. Do they talk to you much about that? If, Do they have like meetings like, all right, like um, you know, this is happening or that? Or, or are they just like, you know, we'll just edit it. It's not live. We can just fix yes it. Yes and no. Um, yes and no. There's times that like, I mean, there's there's sometimes I've only gotten in. I don't I didn't get in trouble. I'm a grown dude. But, yeah. I, but I did get a talking to. I ain't going to lie. Like there was one time I did. X on your uh, report card. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did post something up on social media one time. And uh, I was asked, hey, I don't think that's a good deal for the branding. Can we huh. take that down? You don't have to take it down, but I'm just letting you know it's probably a good idea if you take it down. Yeah. So I took it down. That was the only time that I, I had actually kind of, and I, I'm, I'm big on like pushing boundaries. So like I knew that was the limiting point. So I went ahead and just backed it up half a notch and I stay there now and I'm good. Yeah. And never had an issue since. Uh, but uh, they do have... Every now and then they'll have a talking like if, if you're acting up or acting out or maybe you're not doing enough. We just had a we had a big meeting last year, uh, the beginning of the year, and they basically were just letting everybody know, like, you know, interacting on social media with the fans need to do that. Because if it that's what's going to grow this thing. And and we are part of the growing process. And if you're not going to do that, then there's going to be reper uh, what is it? Repercussions. Yeah. yeah. Repercussions. Um, and. And. I feel like some people are feeling that this year. There's been some people I heard rumors are getting price cuts and, you know, uh, checks are getting cut back and all that. And if you're not willing to put in the time and the work to be able to help to grow the brand and you're just there just to milk it out, then they just they won't need you. They'll just get rid of you. Yeah. I Keep mean, they almost forward. need to like, you know, when you walk in the door, like, mm -hmm. you know, where'd you hear about this? Who, you know, your, your team who has, sent you here? Because yeah. if they're like, oh, I saw it on Justin's social media. For sure. That should give you a little bit more because there's some people that are out there racing that may not even post there in they, they don't. Ohio and, that they're racing. And they don't. And that's where it's gotten a lot better. I, I, I'm I not sitting here saying that like I, I was the one that you know posted the most or did that, but I interact with my fans. It's probably, important. And you have to. And yeah. But I'm a people's person. I love interacting with people. But it has gotten the other drivers to start interacting more and to start posting more. And now... I mean, in the beginning, now there was there was no YouTube channels and all that. Like, I had a YouTube channel going into it. I only had, you know, 20,000 subscribers moving into it. But um, now everybody's got one, you know, yeah. uh, moving forward. And, dude, they're, they're, they're killing it. I mean, Kai, I think Kai just hit over 108,000 subscribers. Ryan Martin's over 120,000. You got 
You got Murder Nova. I think he just hit over two hundred thousand. I mean, it, it's yeah, it's Chief definitely, is like fully. Yeah, he's fully Chief, YouTube. He's full YouTube now. Now on his end, he kind of he kind of screwed himself. Um, that deal there with his setup, and I feel like maybe he kicks himself an ass about it. I don't know. I don't really talk to the guy. Yeah, but uh, um, he he could have done a lot more and growed a lot. If bigger. he's happy, then for sure. Um, so like I I don't talk to him or know him personally, so I don't know. But just you know, looking from the outside looking in, um, I feel like he could have he could have did a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so it being able to interact with the fans and social media is is a big big thing, and uh, um, we'll we'll see where it goes. And I think a lot of people don't realize too is like the show may not last forever, so you got to build something that's yours. You're crazy for not taking what they're offering you yep. and building something on your own. Cause like, you know, one of those guys gets dropped tomorrow and they're like, I don't even have a thousand followers. Yeah. What was I doing? So, Why so, didn't I make posts? So if you had the opportunity that you're pretty smart to, to be able to do something like that. A lot of them don't do that. And you almost need them, to teach a class and sit these guys down. Well, so, and, and, and there for a while I would try to, I, and I still, to this day, I'll help anybody, yeah. but I kind of, you know, kind of got slowly graduated from that and was like, I, I'm, I focus more on me now because the one thing I've learned is to most of them, it's a one way street. It's if you can help them and there's nothing mm-hmm. in return. So for me, I'm not like that. No matter sponsorship, friendship, whatever, it has to be a two way street. Let me help you. You help me. We keep moving forward. Um, so I, I kind of got away from that. But I tell people all the time. They don't charge us to come to an event. We get to race for forty thousand dollars on Saturday. We get to be on massive group, massive group, national television. They don't take none of our merch sales. NHRA, I I don't know the actual accurate number, but I think they take half of all the drivers' merch sales. They take it and that money gone. We don't get none of our merch sales taken, so we're allowed to do that. We're allowed to shoot our own videos at the track and be able to post them up on our social medias because it just helps mm-hmm. grow their stuff too. Um, but so for people, like you said, that don't take that opportunity and move forward with it, if this show was to quit tomorrow, which it's not, I think I think it's going to be around for the next seven to ten years. Yep. Um, but if it was to quit tomorrow, there's a lot of the drivers that would be – kind of lost but they, not even just the show ends like they cut you they cut and they can't they they it's I tell their show time, it's they their can show cut you they can cut you whenever you want you can get fired and be gone and out of there mm-hmm. and within the way that they got the best editors out there they can edit it like you're just boom yeah. gone like even me like i tell people all the time i i think i bring a lot to the show and i i'm fortunate to be able to do what i do but they could find another one of me tomorrow they could literally find Will they act exactly like me and do the stuff that I do? Probably not, but it's not a big deal. But they could edit it to be similar. If you film somebody long enough, for sure, you're gonna find stuff that you could and, edit and in they, there. Nicely. They could get rid of me, and the show would keep going. It, it, it will. It won't even skip a beat. Yeah, so, they've done actually a really good job at that. Yes. So um, it's just it, it's definitely crazy to be able to see the stuff. There's like you said in the beginning of this deal. There's people that had businesses. They gave up their businesses to be able to run and chase this deal. So make it work out because if you do get cut or whatever, what are you going to go to? What do you have to go to? Or um, I did. I kind of I kind of got carried away and had all my eggs in one basket and I was comfortable. And I know I sat down at the beginning of this year and I said, you know what? I need to change some things around and do something because you never know if if. If you get fired, if you get cut or whatever, I got cars not able to make it for a few races. So you got to be able to do other stuff. So I, I kind of switched my things around and started putting some money in different places and started doing some other things uh, to be able to, you know, broaden my audience as one, but also have eggs in different baskets to be able to go to this. But for on my end, I, I, you know, I got I did get a contract this year. Um, so I, I Congrats, signed, awesome. signed that. And moving forward with that, and I don't plan on going nowhere. I, I've put everything into the MPK circuit, into the Street Outlaws for the last three years. Um, and I told them, as long as they have me, then I'm always there. I'll do whatever they need yeah. to be done. I, I am about growing the brand, uh, going to Australia. That was an awesome experience. From what I hear, we are going to get another experience like that. I heard a rumor that it's going to be Qatar. 
Oh, yeah. So that that, that would be a sense. cool deal. If it happens, I don't know if it will. Uh, nothing's set in stone. But if it does happen, and I don't even know if I'll get invited. But hopefully I do. I got to do good this year to be able to keep moving forward. But I've done all the right things as in uh, getting the maintenance done, getting spare parts, getting everything ready to be able to do good. And like we said, we did our first test session. We made two passes. It was very successful. Um, I leave Monday to head to Ohio. I'm going to start. In, I'm going to stop in South Carolina and uh, do one more test session and then go to our first race. Yeah, and they have rules about how close you can test to the yes. track, right? Uh, yes, they do. So you are – so let's say Ohio, for instance, um, is the first race. You are not allowed to test within two weeks of the race date within 200 miles. So if uh, – um, Ohio is right here. I can test at a track, but it has to be over 200 miles yeah. away. So if you live in Ohio, right near yeah, the you track, got, you got to go. So, so that great, great point. So last year, our first race was down in uh, West Palm Beach. Yeah. I was screwed. I had to leave the state of Florida to go test because Orlando and Bradenton are within the 200 miles. Yeah, so you had to go up like South Georgia. So I had to go to, uh, well, I went to South Georgia and uh, it rained out and I ended up having to go over to House of Hook in South Carolina. So I was literally traveling around. I had to leave my state yep. to be able to go test to get ready for the first race. That's funny. Uh, but it makes it good because the first couple seasons, you had people that, you know, had more money and was able to test. We would leave in an event and, you know, guys would have to go back to work, you know, work Monday. Well, some of the drivers, they would just go to the next track and they would test for three days. Yeah. And then they had so many passes for that track coming up that weekend. And then you would have people that come in Thursday and Friday and then be able to race. So I'm glad they came up with that rule. It, it makes it a lot better. And uh, the, uh, the, the competition is a, a little stiffer with that deal and, and set in stone. I always worry with like a car like that, you know, if you go test, you know, make 20 passes, you're just running that thing ragged and come race day. You are, but, but the, the testing is, is where it's at. You can never have not too much data. Yeah. So, um, I mean, like I said, we all got spare parts, you know, we, we, you change the rods, change the springs, you just keep moving forward. Uh, I tell you who's probably one of the best at it is Ryan Martin. Ryan Martin tests a lot. He, he, uh, and that's the reason why he's won the championship the last three years in a row. And uh, um, this year, I mean, I'm hoping I'm the one that knocks him off. If not, maybe somebody else does. He may go out there and win it again. Ryan is a very hard competitor to race against. Um, he's got I, a bounty on him too, doesn't he? He did last year. I don't know what they're doing this year. They'll um, probably wait till yeah, a probably the rounds first. In. Probably the first race is probably one they'll announce some if they announce something. But yeah. last year they did. They did a ten thousand dollar bounty if you uh, uh, if you beat Ryan. Um, just any round of so, so it, would, it would gradually grow so the first round was 2000 second round was four three third round was six eight and then in the finals if you beat them in the finals you got 10 that's such so, big money that no prep kings gives out yeah so uh i we hardly get gas money sometimes and, and that's why i tell people all the time that that's another reason why mpk is so successful is that the fan base we wouldn't be able to we wouldn't be able to run for those amounts of money if we didn't have the fans that came to the track to be able yeah. to see us. So the fans are what keeps this thing moving and keeps rolling forward. So they, they we have to be able to entertain them to be able to keep moving forward with the process. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I won, I beat Ryan three times last year. I think it was one for one for two, one for 6,000 and one for like 4,000 uh, because that was the rounds that we were in. Um, but uh, that, that was, a cool experience and running up against Ryan, it, it makes me a better driver. Uh, I love racing Ryan. I, I ran Ryan more than anybody last year. Uh, we had 15 races. I raced them 13 times last year. And uh, uh, I was able to, you know, beat him a couple of times. He beat me. Um, he finished first in points. Kai finished second and I placed third. That's last two years in a row. That's yep. been the first top three. Um, so we'll see how going into this season, how it works and moving forward with it. And, and see what goes in. But Ryan tests a lot, and that's why he he is who he is. And he's got the he's best. He's a front runner for a yes. reason. He's got the best of the best stuff. He's got pro line. He's got Steve Petty behind him. Yep. Um, it, and it's it's hard to race against that, but it, it makes everybody else better, and uh, it definitely makes me better. I, I love going up against him. Yeah, his his winning streak isn't by accident. No, that's he, for sure. he's definitely put in the time, the money, and the effort to be able to be where he's at. 
Yeah. And then, um, so you were just talking about how many times you raced him. You guys have like a stats guy. Yes. That posts on so Facebook that, that's aggressively. Actually, that's actually a badass deal. Like, really cool. This guy came out of nowhere. He was just, you know. Just a fan. Just a fan. And uh, I want to say that now he he does YouTube, social media and stuff. And I think he has left his job that he was that's working. That's so cool. So, and he does. He And me personally, I, I don't even I don't even have the smarts to be able to come up with the stats like he mm -hmm. does. He has literally went to back to season. Well, some of the stats like Ryan, he's done it from season one. Yeah. But like for me, I you know I won't, this is my third season. For the second season, I mean he's broke it down. How many wins? How many losses? Uh, what's your what's your percentage? Yep. Uh, when you go into the round, what's your percentage you're going to win? Uh. Or, he broke it down as how many times so wait, I let beat me, Pinky. So for people that don't know, there's a Street Outlaws stats guy, I think, on on Facebook. That's his name. And he breaks down everything, like if you're watching baseball or football, and Dude, the ESPN has every stat of every, oh, if he pulls up next to him, you know the win percentage is this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy, the the stats that he comes up with. Like, uh, And then another thing, which I thought it was cool, was, so I want to say... Me, I think there's one other driver that has raced every driver at least once. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people they, they haven't they haven't got to run like like take Kai for instance. He may have not got to race against I, I don't know, just say Mike Murillo for for instance. Yeah. But like me, I have raced every driver at least once in a competition round. Mm, that's pretty cool. So so that was but like I would have never knew that. He just come up he he went through he's watched every video. He knows when you won, when you lost, what what's it and and that's it's a cool thing to be able to see that, uh to know where like over all time, this is our sixth season or their sixth season. This is my going in third season. I am third highest winning ratio out of all drivers that's been through six seasons. So it, it, it works. It's it's a pretty cool, humbling experience to be able to see. And, and a fan, like you said, to be able to go through that, to be able to make that happen. And now he's turned it into a livelihood. Yeah, he turned it into like a thing. I, I saw him talking like yeah, he does live. Po he does podcasts, podcasts with now. With people, he yeah. does YouTube. He's doing social media. And from what I hear, he's coming to the event. So pretty cool. That's it, that's a cool way to like take just yeah, something. Just keep moving forward with and it. just like blow it up. And he doesn't even race. He doesn't even have no. a car. None of I that. I told him he's, he's the smart one. Yeah, he get he gets to not spend a whole lot of money, it was fuel money coming to the event, and then that's it. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a cool dude. I, I did his uh, podcast, and uh, we talked to, for a, a while talking about things and getting ready for this season. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, that was a cool experience to be able to see all the stuff that. Yeah, you need somebody like that to kind of do the back end, and it, stuff. And it makes it fun. I, I mean, I'm a big football fan and uh, basketball and all that, and. Just imagine watching all the football games and all the basketball, and you didn't know no stats about Tom Brady or yeah. LeBron James or anything like that. So it definitely makes it a, a, a more fan-related experience. Yeah, ESPN has teams of people that do that yep. stuff for a reason. Yep. So to add that, um, to to change subject, instant green. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's such a hot thing that so many people hate is that instant green. But you guys have it a different way. Mm -hmm. There's two ways to do instant green. Okay. that I've noticed. Some tracks just unscrew the bulbs, and it's okay. 400 Pro Tree, yep. you don't see the three bulbs. Yep. You guys actually have it a setting on the trees, I feel like. So we've done both ways. Um, so Chris boosted. He he sets all that up, uh, and he makes sure every tree is ready to go before the weekend, and we do run on an instant green. Um, I I... In my experience, I think it's set on a 400 tree, like you said, mm -hmm. and they do. They take the amber lights out. We don't see no amber lights. All we see is a green light. What happened was is you were able to guess a light. And when you guess the light and say you did hit it because the ambers still drop and then the green light drops. Yeah. You just We just don't get to see the ambers. So someone like you who's not a street guy... That so, has a lot of experience on. Yeah, it. you could get, you could count the tree and guess the light if mm -hmm. if you wanted. To, I could literally go out there and count the tree and guess it and get it get it perfect every time yeah. because it's a seven second pro tree. It, it's gonna drop at seven seconds. All you had to do is just time it right and be able to be good. Well, when you get that jump on somebody, you have a four tenths head start. Yeah. You just can't make that up. Coming around somebody in the eighth mile doesn't really. You happen. just you can't make that up. So now they have switched it around. I believe now that they have hooked the green light up to one of the amber lights 
And like when it shines, that shines as well. You're still able to guess, but now it's not such a big window. You can actually go red, or if you do get to guess, you may get a 10th head start. So I love, excuse me, I love the instant green. Um, I think it's cool. It's definitely different where, like, I just went to the test session to be able to see a pro tree. It kind of startled me the first pass, like, because I was just looking for instant green because I've been, you know, yeah. running on it so much. Um, so the first pass was, I think I went like 142 on the light. And uh, the second pass, I went negative 52 red. I was going to say, I saw a red light yeah, when you were testing. Ne- negative 52 red or something like that. So uh, I haven't ran on a pro tree in a long time. Um, but uh, uh, it, it, the instant green is a cool deal. I think it's a... Uh, it's more and it's more like your your street, you know, your street light. I guess you want to say you see yep. the green come on. So it's a cool thing. I like the instant green, but I don't like hearing people complain about then suddenly <laughs> and the do. instant green does instant green. And yeah. you're like, ah, that so, was stupid. So, and, and it's part of it. It's in the rules. Like you signed up for it. You signed up for it. You knew what you was, was getting into when you got there. And people are allowed to guess. And if they guess and get it right. So, so yeah, that's pe- what I never understood. So if people get what what part, like why people like why people are anti guessing, like well that's he why could I tried have went red. he could have went red. So it's it's no big deal. He just so happily was on the lucky end of the stick. Yeah. It works out good. He so I've never I've never complained about anybody guessing the light. Um, I did get into it one time with Chuck Sight Singer, and we became pretty good friends after that. Whatever thing, and we're we're past that now. But it wasn't about guessing the light. It was more about. It took him six minutes to stage the car. And, uh, you know, my car ran out of fuel and leaned it out. We ended up hurting some parts. And like I told them, it was more of a, a safety deal. What happens if it went into a lean pop, caught the car on fire? Yeah. You just don't do that. And he understood that from my end. And from I mean, that, six minutes to stage a car it, is it, it, But he had a twin turbo, big tank over. They were just over there just chilling and everything. And I, I could have possibly turned my car off, but my luck, I, it wouldn't have fired back up. So, um he did do all that, and then he guessed the light on me and got the light and won the race. Mm-hmm. So there was nothing I could do about it, um, but uh, uh, we're past that. We done already made a couple more races after that. Everything's good, um, but uh, that was the only time. But I've, there's a lot of people that, you know, bitch and complain about the, the instant green, and it ain't fun to get guessed on, but it's part of it. It is what it is. It's I, I kind of like it. It's it, like... It makes it exciting. Yeah. So, so, it, and that's where there's times like, like last year, uh, we were in Alabama and Kayla Morton beat Ryan Martin. She guessed the light, got the light, and she fucking, she beat him. And yeah. It just, it happens. But for the TV side of it, it was the best story ever because now she just beat Ryan. It took Ryan out from completely, if he would have won that round, he would have secured the championship. Took Ryan out. Now we went to the last race in Texas where Ryan and Kai actually had to go back and forth to be able to win the deal. So then, really, uh, Jim Howe drew Ryan Ryan Martin first round in Texas. If Jim beat Ryan and, say, hypothetically, Kai won the whole event, Kai would have won the championship. So Uh Jim beat Ryan first round. So everything was lining up for this storyline. And then everybody's like, oh, it's scripted. You can't script stuff like that. Nobody's going out there just to take a loss. But it just so happily lined up because all Ryan had to do was win the first round. If he won the first round, he secured the championship. Well, because he lost, it changed everything. And but Kai went out second round and Jim went off to win the event. But uh, um, it it was it was definitely it's pretty comical to think people believe that you can script a race car. (laughs) Dude, <laughs> they're so unpredictable <laughs> running with street outlaws and uh running the show and everything i it it seems to amaze me the stuff that people come up with on social media to, such unpredictable like vehicles. I, so like i seen a comment like i was out there testing and i seen a comment a guy guy watched my video and he commented on there and he goes a screwblower shouldn't idle that high they got the tune up wrong mm. this i so i put on there i said i said what do you think it's idling at and I said, can you tell what RPM it's idle at in the video? Like, it just sounds loud. Said, yeah. So my car idles at 1,800 RPMs. That's kind of where it needs to idle at to be able to go. But that's what I was trying. And he, he just said it. And then all of a sudden, he didn't want to comment back. But like I told him, I said, and I'm, I'm curious to know how you think, like how you think the tune-up's wrong or doing all that mm-hmm. and off of just seeing a clip on, on Facebook. Um, but but uh, let it idle at whatever. Yeah, you it push can, it to the lanes. You can do you whatever. Start you want. it right up. It gets it warm real quick. Yep. 
and then you don't have to worry about it. What the heck? <laughs> like I heard um like the the top fuel cars idle at like twenty five hundred. Yeah, but they leave they, off idle. Yeah, but they they can you can do whatever you want with them. But that's just some of the stuff that I see. It's yeah. like and it, or like so like Kai posted a video or he sent me a video and the past looked good. Well, he posted a clip on Facebook and he cut it off when the tree dropped. He cut the video off. And the guy goes, he only did that because car didn't go down the track. And like, and then everybody started commenting on it or whatever. And then so I just jumped on there. I'm like, well, he sent me the video and the car went down the track and it looks fast. Everything's good. I said, but, but people will take what they see and run yeah. with it. So it, it's part of the job. Well, that's why with like um, social media, I have this mentality. I'm sure you have a similar, I'm not trying to be a fan of every person in the world. Yeah. You don't, like you, no, I, every I, person in the be. world is not going to be my fan and I'm okay with that. Exactly. I've come to terms with that. I'm comfortable with that. And I think you have the similar mentality of like, you can't please them all. You, you can't. And that's what I try to tell other people is that I, I'm a big on, there's no bad publicity unless you were to, you know, do something stupid. That's that. But I'm saying if somebody's talking about you, they're keeping your name yeah. in line. I can honestly tell you, if I was to log into Facebook right now, I am probably on every single forum page. Somebody is saying something about it. But to me, that's perfect for me. It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Publicity is publicity. Um, so I'm, I'm good with that. There's some people that I'm, I've had to, I've had, to, I literally, because I, I feel bad for them when I see it on the internet, but I'll text them and be like, hey, listen, you got to stop changing what you're doing to try to help this guy, then help this guy, then do this guy. Because even though when you help this guy, this guy is going to get pissed off. You're not going to be able to be able to please everyone and um i even told my mom this where my fan base is growing when i started out i maybe only had 20 haters and it turned into 200 haters and then there's 2000 haters and like I, and my yep. mom was bad about that she would try to argue with all of them on the internet and i told her i said it's 2000 versus one you can't go up against all the but those 2000 haters that i have i got 200,000 fans that are good with them so you know, it's like I, 20 to one yeah, at all so, times. So it, it, it works out good like that. And you can't, like you said, you can't please everyone. And, and for me, I don't try to please, I don't try to please no one. I wake up in the morning, I do my job, I go forward. I like to have fun. Nobody tells me, Hey, you need to shoot this or you don't need to put that up. I've been pretty good about growing my brand and moving forward with it. And uh, I've had a lot of help along the ways. Um, I try to shout everybody out, help in that. Whenever you ask me to come down and do this, this is a cool experience to be able to come do it. Yeah, dude, thank you so and, much for coming. And, and, to and to be able to, uh, I've seen y'all run the quarter miles, and I even told my dad on the way down here, it's it's a there's enough out there that everybody can make it. I'm big on that. So to be able to, you know, come over here and talk with your fan base and, you know, uh, my fan base being able to watch your clips and everything, it, I'm hoping that my deal will help your stuff grow as well. And, and that's where the two-way street comes in on my end. Um, so I'm, I'm big on that. But, uh, yeah, it's just it's a cool experience. Yeah, the social media side, some people, I imagine some of, like, the older guys that you race with mm -hmm. might take some of that stuff a little more to heart. They whereas do. Whereas we understand, like, you got to have thick skin out here. First yep. off, you got to have thick skin to race cars. Yep. And then to post it on social media – and then to post failures on social media, yep. you got to have real thick skin. So, so I'm like, I've developed like an alligator out here. And, and, <laughs> and I, I, growing up, my dad raised me that way. I have very thick skin. I tell people all the time, I got broad shoulders. It don't matter. I, I don't matter what you say to me. It's not going to affect me. Yeah. You, you're not paying my bills. You're not moving forward. I, I'm good with it. Uh, but you definitely got to have thick skin. And I'm, I'm big on, if I know it's bothering you. I'm going to dig in even harder. Like just uh, like, hell, there was this one guy that's uh, coming to race with us in MPK this year. I um, mean, he posted up a video today and uh, and nothing. Again. They'll, they'll test. They'll figure it out. Uh, but it, it looks slow. And when I mean, I mean, it looked real slow. And he's like, he's like, we're bringing the heat. I can't wait to get there. <laughs> so I put the comment. <laughs> I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I said, if you come with this bullshit, <laughs> I said, you are getting gapped. <laughs> but and he's like. He's like, really? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> like, I don't think people yeah. realize how fast these cars are. And they're going to keep testing. And they'll get faster and they'll get better. But on my end, I, I, I'm i just joking. But I'm, I'm I'm there to have fun and, and post comments. So if they take it to heart, that's on them. And um, and and I just have fun with it. That's the 
that's the best thing about it is to be able to, have, I tell people all the time, the day I don't have fun will be the day that I'll sell it all and I'll go do something mm -hmm. else. So right now I'm continuing to have fun and, and keep moving forward. And I, I love talking shit, especially when it comes to the internet. Um, uh, it, it, it makes it more exciting and all that. As long as it's about racing, I am big on keeping it about racing. I never make it personal. And if there's times that, you yep. know, other people try to make it personal and I exit the conversation. Once somebody tries to make it personal or tries to go throw a dagger at families or anything like that. That's when you lost a discussion I, and yeah, you lost I, a debate. I, I, I lose interest and I move forward. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about racing, we're talking about cars. If you want to do a meme on me, that's cool. Yeah. I'm good with that. But uh, you want to say your crew chief tuner sucks, whatever yeah. it is, all that. So that's one thing. It's just it's just whenever people try to do a like a personal dag about, you know, the lifestyle or what we do and all that. It, it just doesn't make it fun for me. And it's not a big deal. I, I don't even tell them, hey, I'm not into that. I just mm -hmm. just don't interact with them no more. And I keep moving on, going on about my deal. And you have thick enough skin for that. Yeah. And I worry a lot of people. They don't. They, There's a lot of people really that get don't. in their feelings. And that's what turns into. I tell people all the time. I am very big on. I could walk past you like I never met you in my life. Like I, I, I'm so focused in, in a zone now of growing a brand and doing that, that I don't have time for any little petty stuff going on where, like you said, there's a lot of drivers that take that stuff to heart and it, it turned into a bigger deal than what it needs to turn into. And, uh, and there's a lot of people that, you know, has some drivers don't really like me and to them, yeah, like I tell them, I don't. I really don't care. You, you have an issue, that's on you. I'm just still, still keep going forward with me. You can figure it out with yourself. Um, but uh, and then if they turn it into a bigger issue, then there's times. And, and I'm not, I'm not a confrontational type. I don't go out there and try to fight people and shit. But I definitely will, will protect myself when it comes down to that uh, avenue. But uh, there's times that people will try to try to make it personal, and I'm just like. It's just not worth it for me. I, I live a good lifestyle. I, I like to have fun. I mm -hmm. think about the worst shit that can happen. So I'm um, just being, you know, in a prison just cell. Stay in your lane, stay blinders, lane like your helmet. Going. You got the blinders on. So and that's where that's where I think I've done well with that is being able to, you know, slowly poke at the bear. And if mm -hmm. I feel like they're wanting to do a personal deal or whatever, I just dip. Well, it's the balance between the drama to grow social media, mm -hmm. but also not like drama to like make enemies yes. and have people that hate you. Yeah. Because there's a there's a balance there. Yeah, for like sure. Like growing social media with like some drama is a thing. Yeah. And growing social media with personal attacks doesn't sound fun at all. No, and, and, and that's where some people get... And, and, and so how I explain it is, is if somebody has to do a personal attack or something like that, they don't have no shit talking skills to talk shit to yeah. you that they, they don't they can't have fun with it they're the type of person that will try to say something that's funny and if you try to say something and somebody else is laughing mm -hmm. now they're pissed so that's just how it is and not everybody has the 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 i don't the vocabulary or the, to be able to talk shit and yep. be able to have fun with it me i love doing it i i'm having fun and there's at no point in time am i ever serious and when i'm done with that post I'm done. I done moved on to the next post. I don't even think about it. I don't go back to it. Yeah. I'm going to it. And there's people that come out. They're like, "Well, this happened on there." I honestly, I don't remember because I post so much and I and I do that. Um, I I just I don't I don't. And you interact with the people too, which is so huge. I don't on there. Put too I much try to do the same that. thing. I try yeah. to comment back to people, but people will notice. I only do it for like 20 minutes, well, and then so, that post is dead. <laughs> so that's where it, it's also came into play. It's grown so big. I used to comment to every post. Yep. I com I comment back to everybody, but it's gotten bigger than me. I can't comment to every single person, and I've gotten better with that because it used to aggravate me uh, or like messages, my Facebook messenger. I respond to all my messages. I respond to all my emails. When people see me commenting or see me messaging, it is coming from me. I, I don't have nobody running my social medias. A lot of these people out there, they do. They got people that run their social medias. Or Some of them need it. They do, but I feel like it's not the same interaction. Way less authentic. So that's where it comes into play. And uh, because it's not really coming to, if you were, say you were running my social medias and you made a comment on Facebook, maybe it's not something I would comment. Yeah. Like that. So that's where it comes into a, a battle deal. But like I tell people all the time, I run everything. So when they see me comment, they see me talking, they, they, they know it's coming from me. Um, the messages, I get so many messages a day and I try to keep up with it. And there's some people that do get pissed off. Like, oh, you didn't respond to me. 
I can't respond to every single message. There's only one yeah. of me. Um, but uh, but I've gotten better with it to be able to uh, accept that I can't uh, respond to everyone. Um, also, I get blocked a lot on social media, and and when I get blocked, I lose out on my monetization and my money. So I've yeah. learned that I can't go back and forth with every person because if I get blocked, I'm gone for a whole month. This guy's just you know mowing his lawn, drinking a beer, and he's he's doing living life. Yeah, he's so, fine blocked. So I I, I kind of watch who I interact with is a lot now, and then if I do interact with people, I don't like go all in. It's like saying certain stuff because nowadays, like you used to be able to get away with a lot on social media. Now everything, dude, you you can get that seven day, fourteen day, or thirty day ban, and now my shit's set up where I get a thirty day no matter what. So. I, I make sure I, I stay everything on course. Well, like, it's crazy enough. Like, Facebook, for instance, James is, has a burnout truck called White Trash. Yeah. You will get a 30-day ban if you say the name of his burnout truck wow. on a comment. And that's, like, crazy because it's just, like... So, the weirdest one I had was this happened uh, This happened middle of last year. And that, at that point, I, I drew the straw. I said, never again. And it was a girl that was... Uh, uh, I'm good friends with. She had posted a photo up um, out on a beach, like her and a bunch of friends out on the beach, uh, and it was just a it was just a water, like it wasn't even a her. Mm-hmm. And I said something about looks like a starfish, just just something along that. They blocked me for 30 days because they said I wasn't allowed to uh, compare a human being to an animal to make them feel less about their wow. self. And I got a 30 minute, and from that point forward. The algorithm nailed that, though. Dude, they killed me on it. I was like, I can't believe they even put that together. I said, (laughs) but that's how they said. They said, you cannot compare a human to an animal to make them feel less about their self. And I was like, from that day forward, I said, "Um, never mind. I'm good. There's no more commenting when it comes down to like that. I'll comment back. You know, my biggest thing is I say, hell yeah, a lot. So when people are commenting on there, and and I, I just, I have to, because, and a lot of people are like, and there's some people, like you said, your fan can catches on to that and they're like oh why aren't you saying this you're not doing that and i try to tell them because i can't afford with this monster that i got and the the operation i got going on i can't afford to lose out a whole month Mm -hmm. of what we got going on i mean that's that's like people going to work for a month and not getting paid yeah so so it definitely has changed over the years and i feel like it's it's only going to get worse with certain stuff yep um you have to uh, really tiptoe around on like youtube and on Like if you have like Instagram and you have like subscribers on your Instagram, yep. those they can cut pretty like, quick. I've seen people get those cut. Oh, dude, it, it's crazy. And then, and then like you can't even you can't even type out like uh, if you were to type out M F E R, like we all know what that means. You yeah. type that out right now, you you get banned. That's a Facebook. common thing in drag racing. But it's just say. a common word. It's normal. You're not doing nothing mm-hmm. wrong. But it's just certain things. That's it's stuff that I've learned because I've already been a part of it. Type that out. Can't even do that. And 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 Facebook and YouTube, they've gotten smarter. So now you can't like, uh, like if you were to type out uh, B I A H H H H, like everybody knows what that says. Whatever, you get banned from that too. Like they've yeah. gotten smarter with this. So you you do have to watch what you do and what you say to be able to keep staying monetized. If anything, I fear the shadow ban more because that is like a. It's like a dagger without bleeding out. So I, you know, like you're just sitting there with it. Oh yeah, it it, it definitely. I I can't say I've ever experienced it because I I don't know exactly. I've seen it to a lot of people. I don't know exactly what happens. Or I've what seen it, it to like Whistling Diesel, where you type in his Instagram and it exactly, doesn't pull up and it doesn't pop up. So and and I've tried. I've seen that too, but I've never had that experience. The only thing that I've had is where it un unfollows or unsubscribes yeah. people and like people coming on the comment section and be like i had to subscribe again. youtube does that weirdly and they'll I, just like clean house and so and then maybe like they go through and like try to maybe they think they're fake accounts and they're trying to mm-hmm. clean them up because there's a lot of people like bots and stuff on social media uh so that that definitely will play a factor with it do you have um i know you were doing like only fans and stuff do you have any kind of like changes your planning for your social media kind of attack it differently do you sit down and think about that like, i do you know you, i've seen you have like a whiteboard you like okay yeah. how am i gonna do something different so, this year so i uh i'll just go through the motions so so i i plan everything out um i am very very money driven um i feel like 
money is what drives the world and to be you have to be in racing you have to especially racing especially the program i am so there's a lot of people are like oh he sold this car oh he did this or hey he started only fans i did um i deleted it Uh, i'm not gonna lie i this year coming into this year i i thought about things a little differently i said you know what i i have a pretty stellar fan base and uh um i mean i was doing I, my first month, I did forty-two thousand dollars on OnlyFans, and you know I was averaging fifteen to twenty-five grand every month after that. Yeah, but I and I even made this post on Facebook, and uh, nobody knows it, but I said not all money is good money, so uh, I I deleted it, and uh, because I I kind of had a a different look, outlook on things this year, I have a lot more kid fan base um, moving up. And I wanted to do more about it and nothing against people that have that deal or OF and all that. Um, but uh, I just I thought about things a little differently and and, and growing my socials. I've, I've tried to clean up, I guess you want to say my act. I still am who I am. I'm still going to go out and do the stuff that I do. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm having fun. Um, I'm 27 years old. I, I'm I'm not going to you know, cold cut turkey. Just do it. But there's some things that I do clean up to be able to keep growing this deal to be able to keep moving forward with it. Yeah, and, and you become a little bit more advertiser friendly, yeah. even though that's not like your concern, but it helps. So, it's so nice. and it, it does help and it, it's changed some stuff like uh, like growing up, I, I did construction. So cussing around me was, you know, a normal thing. And yeah. I, I do. I, I and that's even like the least of construction. So <laughs> you hang out with those I've guys. Got, long I've gotten better with, you know, cussing, but every now and then it still comes out. It is what it is. Um, but, uh, the YouTube, like I can tell by just looking through the, or looking through my analytics, like when I say the word, you know, cuss word, it, it Mm -hmm. tanks. So we've, we've tried to got gotten a little better as in trying to, you know, clean it up and, and do all that. Um, and not everything is made for the internet. So, uh, I, I do have a whiteboard that I, I, you know, I, I I put out my whole entire week process or my month process of what I plan on doing, what I need to do, and I try to cross the things off as we go. And it's growing. It's getting bigger. It's getting better. Um, merch sales are, you know, extremely well right now. So that, that, that helps out. And that's what helps keep the program going. But to answer your question, yes, I do. I do think about the future and what I can do to be a better me to move forward and keep doing that. And then like I said, only fans and listen, it was great. It was cool. I mean, uh, got to meet some pretty cool people, you know, do some, uh, content collaboration and all that. But at the end of the day, it's just for what I got going on. It just wasn't, yeah, it wasn't in the store moving forward. So. I mean, I have no, like some people may look at that and be like, Oh, you started an only fans yeah. and then you ended it. And I don't really like, I was like, Oh, it was an experiment. Yeah, people, you got to do that kind of stuff and, sometimes. You and can't I'm not just, saying I'm not saying down the road wouldn't fire it back up. I mm-hmm. mean, it just there's there's just ways to to do it. But and it wasn't I wasn't really doing anything out of the line. I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, it's like sexual and shit. My OnlyFans was more. It had all the parties and doing everything, but it was just another way for my fan base to be able to interact with me. Yeah. People were one on one messaging. I got two hundred thousand fans over here that probably you know. 40,000 messages are coming in. Well, over here, you know, I had 2,500 subscribers and I only had, you know, 2,500 people, maybe only 500 of them would send messages. You can give a lot more attention. I give a lot more attention to it. And we would talk about anything. We would talk about merchandise. We would talk about new stuff that's coming out this year. I was also doing a deal where, uh, like, they got to see the cars before the other social media platforms got to see it. Um, and that we we have a discord we do a, we do a discord process as well um, we got our you know our subscribers on Facebook we got our subscribers on snapchat so I try to do everything to be able to help promote me moving forward but to be able to give the people that do pay a little bit more of an experience yeah I've I've often thought about that with this podcast to do a subscriber side of YouTube yep. where you know cut the cut the video and then 20 minutes of Q a yeah. from the subscribers to the guests and it, it'll to make provide people, something different and you have to pay to have your questions for sure. read so it, and, it makes it less spam and then it'll make it'll you'll have a, a when I say you'll have a loyal fan base yeah there. 
Those people are paying to be there for you. They're not going to be the ones that's going to shit on you. They're not going to be the ones mm-hmm. that's going to hate on you to do for it. Or, yeah, or it's not spam. Want. They can't just harass you just because. So that that's where it does come in. And, and listen, everybody has a loyal fan. You have a loyal fan base. Cletus has a loyal fan base. Um, I think right now they're doing, uh, is it the Freedom Cards? I think I just seen yeah. it. this email come through. I haven't looked too far into it, but like I was sitting there looking at that. It actually just came in last night. And I said, dude, that's a badass idea. And I don't mm-hmm. know what they get for getting that card, but that's a cool experience to be able I, If If it was me, it would probably give them like certain things to a merch website. It would give them certain. I know they do the pay-per-view bill, uh, yep. deals, so that would give them a discount to that. That and and I don't know if that is that, um, but uh, if that was something like that, that that's a cool experience for somebody. And people will a loyal fan base will buy that to be able to have that experience with them one on one. That's what I've always worried about. I'm, I'm I would be so scared to do something because if I feel like I'm falling short to somebody that pays for something, it, it like it hurts. It does, but you know yeah. what I mean. Like falling short to like my fans that are just subscribed to my youtube channel yeah like it's a free deal you're just here watching uh, it, hanging out like you're not you're not putting any money up yeah just, this is free it's a it's a it's a double-edged sword but it, it's definitely it's definitely um uh, like I, I i've learned that you can't you can't hit every deadline um uh, i mean like i can tell you right now i give cletus a lot of props the whole month of freedom that is crazy. It's wild. I don't know how he does it. I don't know. I don't, and I, I was sitting here thinking about it. I was wondering, like, does he has to, like, have all the content six, eight months in advance and ready to go. But it's not. Like, I just watched a video that they just shot last week, and it's already out on the yeah. channel. Like, they literally work their ass off for this whole month, and I really don't know how they do it. He's at his brother's wedding right now. And, and it, dude, a I wedding just on top on, of it. Yeah, he was on a plane. Yeah. Him and, uh, him and Sam. And, you had a uh, wedding on top of it when you're supposed to be doing whoo, daily videos. Dude, and, and that's why I said I don't know how he does it. But And he's one of the, the biggest ones out there. That's why he's uh-huh. got over 4 million subscribers. That's why he's able to, you know, keep growing this deal and uh, the freedom factor. He's turned that thing completely around. And uh, um, it's it's a cool experience to be able to watch it. And I, that's one people that I probably do look up to, as in there's a few YouTube channels that I watch, uh, uh, him, Whistling Diesel. I've seen yep. some of y'all's videos um, but uh, he's it, paved the way for a lot of for automotive sure. YouTube. Yeah, a lot. He's changed the way that a lot of people look at things and fan bases. And well, I tell people all the time racing with a YouTube channel. Garrett Garrett has got the the I say the market corner. That for what we do over here, he's that guy. Mm-hmm. Whistling Diesel, he's got that market cornered right there. Nobody could go out there and do the same stuff, and they would get the same views or same deal because it just wouldn't work that way. Um, what's There's one guy that I've been watching here lately, uh, Wet, Westland Chamblin. Oh, yeah, Westland, yep. So uh, he just got a new shop and everything, and that was a cool experience to be able to see that. And I've seen his videos throughout the years. He just has fun, man. Like, Dude, he just has a blast. He doesn't like – he's not like, oh, I'm going to be a – professional drifter or yep. i want to light the world on fire drag racing and that's the best way to do it and he just I, I mean just seeing y'all out at bradenton and, and watching you know gary i don't know what that what's the little scooby-doo van or whatever yeah. he's in a little like, rotary that thing's out there just fucking i don't know what kind of rpms it turns but it was just out there just on the rev chip and the burnout yep and so that was a cool deal to be able to see that and i was like man they're just out there having the time of their life and then roll out over there and you know cook hamburgers and hot dogs and so uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot more laid back and fun. He's, so um, he's definitely paved the way, though. Off the uh, off the YouTube side of things, if all of this, if No Prep Kings next year says, "All right, you know, Discovery Channel sold, we're changing those things up, we're not doing it anymore," what kind of racing are you going to get in? Because I don't think you're selling a car. I don't think you're getting out of cars. What kind of racing? Has- well, I could go do other stuff. I could, I would, I would, I would definitely probably sell these cars because yeah. they are they are they're built not pro for mods. MPK. Yeah, they're not pro mods. Um, we thought about possibly building a pro mod and running that, but to be honest with you, I already said if this thing was to end, I would sell my stuff and I would probably try to buy, I could buy 10 little small cars and, you know, 30, $40,000 each, you know, mm-hmm. and just go out there and race and have fun. I have two employees now that work for me. Uh, full time, um, you can you know, put them in the cars, you know, experience it. I would like to do, you know, giveaways. I would like to build stuff inside the shop. I have a shop that I built now, um, and be able to, you know, build stuff in the shop and then go test it. Kind of like what Garrett does. I mean, he's got, you know, a great team around him. 
um, tie, you know, fabricating stuff. You got yeah. you know, jack stand, like you got, full in house builds. Yeah, be able yeah. to do that kind of stuff. But like, would you LDR? I know you used to race like no time. Man, I, I don't know because the pro, uh, it because there's to be honest with you, there's no money there. That's yeah. where it comes into play. It's a money suck for sure. Good thing about MPK is that I mean you have to win, but there is money there to to be made. So. To be able to run, like I probably wouldn't go run Radio vs. the World or Pro 275 or none of that because you have to spend so much money to be able to to run that deal. What, what do they pay? $7,500, 10000 yeah. at the most? So I would I would literally change my uh, stuff around and probably try to run. I may end up doing a quarter mile pass, but it, it'd probably be in a little slower car. I wouldn't run it in my shit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I think about that all the time, about what what would happen if this was the end. I don't think it will. I think it's got a good another seven to ten years. Um, but if it was, uh, I'm good about being able to switch switch ways and keep moving. So the cars that you have now, what are they closest to fitting in other form of racing? Like, because they're not pro mods because they got steel quarters. Yeah, no, I mean, you could go you could go run Pro 275. Uh, I mean, you could run Radio vs. the World and all that if you wanted to. I just can't Does get down. Does anybody run that anymore? I don't think so. <laughs> um, I mean, you could run my car in Pro Mod if uh, you got a lighter driver, if you got down to weight. I just, me personally, yeah. I can't get down to weight in that um, with that with that combo. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you, you can run or whatever. You can. I don't think you can run LDR because I think LDR has to have a stock firewall. I'm not 100% sure on oh, that. Oh, yeah, maybe. I, I'm not 100% sure, but if, if they didn't have to have a stock firewall, you could run an LDR too. But, like, my cars right now, they would be your – Pro 275 class. That's where you would go running at. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that would be cool to see. Uh, and there's times that I... Small tire. Well, there's times that I put uh, I put prenup on small tire. Like when I ran the Pro Charger setup, I went 366 with it. Um, just a little at 205. Um, you know, a couple passes out, and I was doing some grudge racing, just having fun because I was off. Yeah. Well, now the, the, the street outlaw schedule, it's so hectic. And now that we're doing the street shows... There's really no time off to be able to go experience and do stuff like that. But on the other hand, like I spent, I spent like eighty five hundred dollars to go to a race one time, and I was I was like, holy shit, because they they take care of us at you know PK. We don't pay for no we don't pay for no racing coming in. You don't pay a tech card. You you, you move yeah. forward, and you get to run for forty thousand dollars. Like so, that's where it definitely. I don't know if I would probably go back and do any of the classes. It'd be tough races. to go do anything for, sure. for that. It'd be I mean, hard. I would I would probably do a little bit of it, but it wouldn't be like a full deal. I, if if this thing was to ever switch switch directions, it would definitely be like to do shop builds and go out there yeah. and, and run stuff, do like a rotary deal or like a little LS. Well, turbo. that's why a lot of people are kind of busting down the door to get into No Prep King. I mean, yep. I've seen, I think Manny has tried to do it a yep. few times. He's... He's been pretty competitive, though. Yeah, and but but at the end of the day, this is what I try to tell people is that it's it's a TV show first. It don't matter how competitive you are, it don't matter how much money you have, and it don't matter how many wins you get. But if you're not good for TV, what's it matter? Yeah. So um, there's a lot of people that's tried to come in and and do that, and they haven't stuck it out. They run two, three races, four races, and then they expe- expect mm-hmm. that they should just be brought up, and it just doesn't well, work you've, like that. You've connected with Manny, right? Yeah, Bajinga. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of his uh, his racing. I mean, it's yeah. just awesome to see. He's, I mean, he's a very he's a very good guy. There's such a, a consistent car. Like if oh, you shit. bet on his team, it's like. But they test a lot. Yeah. They spend, and, and Manny will tell you they spend a lot of money testing, and but that's the reason why they run where they're at and they're mm-hmm. they're as good as they are. Like I feel like any car they put anywhere, Fred, they put. Um, yep. When they put Anton Brown in that thing, yep. it was like right to the won. winner circle, and and that, it just felt like oh, it, it, it's it's definitely a part of the the team that you have around you and and moving forward with this. So um, he will always be successful in any racing that he does. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got uh, I, I I love Manny to death. He's got an endless budget. He can he can do that. He can yeah. go out there and test for three weeks straight if he needed but to. But endless budget is just tip of the iceberg. For sure. Like, you gotta be able there's to have, a lot of people with that. Yeah, but you, and that's and I'll agree, but you got to be able to pay the right people. You got to yeah. have the smarts to do it. You got to financially be able to do it. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot that goes into it. But one thing I can say about Manny is he knows a lot about it. He's not just, you know, writing checks and gets in the car and drives. He knows about his program. He 
he can work on his program. He can yep. he can go out there and race his program. So that's a that's a good thing to be able to do that. It's pretty freaking cool to see. And then all the no prep king stuff is just awesome. I love it for the sport of drag racing. Yeah. A lot of people give it like a lot of people dog on it a little bit, but like for me and seeing that it brings so many eyes to the sport is invaluable. For I, sure. I don't care what kind of like stuff is really going on. I mean, it's drag racing mm -hmm. and it's bringing eyes onto the sport. And then those eyes maybe want to watch some street cars yeah. and see the boards light up. And, and that's where they kind of find like my side of racing is and, the street and that's car. where like even FL 2K, Texas 2K, that's the same thing. If anything, anything that's bringing racing to a highlight to other people you can see, I can get behind. Yeah. I'm good with that because I you want to grow this deal and keep moving forward and hope that they watch other stuff and experience other stuff. Um, I can tell you most of the fan base that comes to like an MPK event. Most of them have never been to a track in their life. They yep. just see a TV show and now so but it may catch them and may get them hooked. And then they may go to their local track all the time. So we've seen that happen too. So that's a good thing about it is to be able to uh uh have the 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 viewership of all the platforms to be able to and if it's anything to do with racing to help grow the sport, then it's good. Yeah, that's always my hope that it kind of trickles down mm -hmm. from there and they do all the marketing and all the big budget to get people in the door. Yep. And then once you're in the door, you kinda poke around, see what else is there. And that's what you guys are doing an awesome job at. It's really freaking cool to I, see. I do think oh MPK is probably one of the, the 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 biggest ones that does do that. They they bring in a lot of viewership. Um you know, a lot of views for the TV show when it's aired. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely doing that. And then, like, just being able to, uh, like, there's times I get e uh, emails or messages, hey, what do I wear to the event? And I'm like, gym shorts. <laughs> yeah, bring a sun hat. T-shirt, yeah. <laughs> bring an umbrella. It's just, it's going to be hot. Yeah. But, You're going to uh, be sitting around. But they, they, they've never been to an event. And, and it's, so they'll come by and they'll be like, hey, this is the first thing I've ever been to. This is fucking amazing. And, and that's where it makes it. It makes it cheerful and it's like okay you you really made somebody's day or mm -hmm. like i'm i'm big on like i i put the kids in the car let them sit in the car let them yeah, experience I've seen you it let them fire um, it up let them fire it up and all that and uh most of the time I've, i haven't had no issue yet mm -hmm. knock on wood as in like uh they don't touch stuff whenever it's fired up so yeah as long as everything's good but then they get to experience it because i was a kid once too and at the racetrack and when i i'd want to go sit in people's cars or i wanted to fire them up too so um i just try to make the experience you know Best well, I've seen everyone. some videos, and I think it's Brian. Is that who's on your Brian, team? Yep. He seems like he's all in. He's on the best with the kids. Everything on the kids and yep. on helping on the car. And I'm every time I've seen him on video, like helping it, I'm mm -hmm. like, that man is like he, lit up doing that. He's all he's all for the kids. Uh, and we kind of crack jokes on him every now and then, as in because uh, he does. He tells them, uh, what's he tell the kids? He says, uh, he says, if you do good in school. You can have this ride right here. <laughs> I told Brian, I said, bro, you got to stop lying to these kids like this. He's, he's like, no, I'm serious. They got to go to school, though, and then they got to go to college, and then they got to mm -hmm. win a lottery, and then they're here. Tell them, start a construction <laughs> company. Yeah, That's start a construction. That's the normal way to it. Get, get, a, get a YouTube channel. I told Brian, I said, their kids going to go home and tell their mom, as long as I finish school, yeah. I better have this car whenever I graduate. <laughs> so uh, Become a doctor. <laughs> but he's, uh, he's, he's great with the kids, and it, and it just makes the experience. I mean, like there's a, my mom does the same thing. She's um, she's on this kick where uh, she brings frozen popsicles and ice cream and brings in there and hands them <laughs> That's out awesome. and, and does it. But um, it, it, it allows people to go out and tell their friends, hey, this is what we experienced there. Y'all mm -hmm. need to go next time. And that's why it gets bigger and bigger. MPK is the biggest. I, I personally think it's the biggest platform out there when it yep. comes down to racing sell out all the events i mean it, it's 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 amazing what it does well it's funny because i tell people this story a lot like my dad mm -hmm. my mom not into racing at all they live in new york on long island nowhere near a drag strip and they came down for like one of my races yeah and my dad was walking around and he's like he's like man i'm in like i want to buy a race car like these are my people like these people are the best he's like never the fans the it. racers never guy doesn't ah. even change his oil nothing like that like he's never been around cars as his life at all See, people don't know what they miss and he's like these are my people like everybody here is cool and nice and like we're all hanging out and like this burgers at the concession stand are good yeah. like <laughs> see people people don't know what they're missing it's the best sport in the world man just, i love it do you worry that you're um in florida you're kind of in a bad spot for no prep kings no uh well for so no everything prep, is kind of like 
For no prep kings, yes, uh, because I do have to travel a lot. And, yeah. like, this year there's no races in Florida. Um, so yeah. That, yeah, last year was at Bradenton. The year before was Palm Beach. Yep. And now there's nothing. So um, that that definitely makes it hard. But I travel a lot. I've been to a lot of states. I've been to that. And I tell people all the time, because people ask me, hey, would you ever move? I don't think I'll ever move out of Florida. Like I'm yeah, from, I don't blame you. From the roads to the the land to everything, Florida is the best. So uh, many shops. So many stuff going on. And then uh, another thing is, is like I grew up here, so I know where everything's at. If you told me, hey, you need to go to 4175, I can go over there and do that. When I go to these other states, I got to have a GPS 24-7. I don't know what's mm-hmm. here. I don't know what restaurants are good. I don't know what when we go out to, like, the clubs and stuff because uh, we do go out, and there's times that, like, the fans will come up, and I'm like, hey, if y'all want to go out with us, we'll go to the bar. So we go to the bar, take them to the bar and everything, but we don't know what a good bar is. We don't know what a good restaurant is and all that. So it does make it a little bit harder, but me personally, I would never leave Florida. Florida is yeah, one of the best. I don't blame you on that. For me, too, it's the same deal. Like, the it's, racing here is the best. I wish Palm Beach was still open, but... I, I, I would like to move closer down to here. Um, I live up in Zephyr Hills. It's a little small area. It used to be a small town. Now it's just growing rapidly. That's same here. <laughs> it's the new It's the new Tampa, and the problem is they're just bringing so many houses and, and uh, people in that it's you can't even get around town no more it's it's just a slow process now but i'm a big town i I wasn't born into a big town but i feel like i'm a big town person like Mm -hmm. i love miami i love fort lauderdale i could live in los angeles like if i if i had to but my business and everything is here at the race car so i have to stay here um and do that um nashville tennessee i've never been there i'm going there this year um we're racing in kentucky and it's yep. only an hour away. I said I'm going to Nashville. I've never been there. I want to go do yeah, it. Yeah, it's a cool. It's a cool spot. It's very touristy, but it's cool. Yeah. Um, another one is uh, New York. I've never been to New York. I, I want to go to New York. Everybody keeps telling me it's a shithole. I don't know. I think you should experience it. I want to do a tour of like all the shitholes. Okay. Because people are like, oh, you know, Portland, Oregon sucks, and uh, you know, LA sucks, and New York, and I'm like, I want to see it all. Like, well, I that's wanna- why I, I want to know uh, for my self experience. Is it is it a shithole or yeah. is it fucking? No, cool? you should go see it. It it is a shithole, but it is okay. worth going to see. I mean, I grew up in New York, Long Island, okay. so I've seen it enough to know so I'm and i'm the only thing i've ever seen is just on tv or movies mm-hmm. so on there it looks fucking amazing like I, uh vegas was the same thing vegas is cool i went there but there's really not a whole lot to do other than if you're gonna gamble mm-hmm. that's it or you can walk the strip if you get outside the strip there's nothing oh yeah you're in a desert it's just desert i like going to like uh pri like yeah. If I'm going somewhere, it's like Indy for PRI. We were just in Indy for yep. Cletus and Cars, and that city's really fun because it's just like a – it's not a big city, mm-hmm. but it's just big enough to, like, scooter around and go to the bars and stuff. I, I do. I like PRI. Uh, a lot of people – I mean, I go up there. I, I do get to meet – my sponsorships happen throughout the year, and I already have my sponsor secured moving forward. So I do go up there, you know, handshake and, you know, meet them and say, hi, yeah. how you doing? But for the most part, I really do PRI as like a vacation. The it's sponsorships cool. definitely don't happen at PRI. Yeah, there's so, too many fans. There's, there's too many people that like and I a, have a YouTube channel. And it sucks because like go like you can't explain to somebody that doesn't know who you are like that. You're not like I, I don't want to say like a big deal, but like yeah, worth sponsoring for sure. Because what are you going to lead with? I have a YouTube channel. Yeah, no, for, <laughs> for sure. And, that, and that's what a lot. And I try to tell people all the time. You don't go to PRI to get your sponsors. That's that's what it is. And, and there's a lot of people that try to do that. And uh, and they may succeed a little bit, but for the most part, your sponsorships happen before there. You go there, then you meet them, blah, yeah. blah, blah, or you get your sponsorships after. But, like, uh, so, like, I, I go there. I have fun for the week that I'm there. It's a vacation for me. Yep. Um, I've never been to uh, – what's the one that's out in uh, Las Vegas? Oh, SEMA. SEMA. Yeah. I've never been to SEMA. I'm going to go to SEMA this year. Um just to you know, experience. It's it. worth seeing. It's okay. cool. It's like so. It's I've never, I've never different done world one. for you. It's not drag race oriented. So okay. you're gonna see like slammed cars and like sweet burnouts and stuff like that. It's cool. They've done a good job with putting that on, but yeah. it's definitely different. Yeah. See. So, so that, and that's just stuff that I like to experience. And now that I am able to you know travel and pay for mm-hmm. it and you know have a little bit of money that I'm able to do it. Um, we like just went to Australia. We're about to book a trip to Costa Rica. 
um, just just to be able to experience stuff and, and, yeah. and move forward with it. That's cool, man. Well, we've been going for about two hours. I think we can wrap it up there, man. This Dude. was freaking awesome. Thank you so they much for coming down. That long. I know it goes quick. Dude, thank you so much for coming down. Where can they find you at? Uh, so I'm on all social media platforms under Justin Swanstrom. Um, I mean, you know, we got YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, all that. I try to, I try to keep up with everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's a job by itself, like just keeping yeah. up with social media. And that's why I try to tell people, and you you know this too, if I take two hours away from social media, you feel like you're you're two weeks away. Like mm-hmm. the notifications that's coming in and all that, like, and, and for me, I have to keep up with it. So that's why it's, it's a, it's definitely a hard job, but, uh, um, merchandise merch is what really keeps this thing going, uh, uh, at www.justinswanstrom69.com. That that's what really helps me, uh, moving forward. Keep the boat afloat. It goes right back into the program. Um, and I, and I think we, I try to, I come up with all the designs and everything. I mean, I have artists that do them for me. I can't draw for shit, but I, I have a somewhat of a vision and I'm like, Hey, I think we should do this. And then they put it together for me. So it works out good. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to keep moving forward. We got season six coming up starting Monday. Yeah. Good deal, man. Well, I'm pumped to see season six. I'm, yeah. I'm excited. I'm glad we got to talk before. And maybe, um, when you're kind of wrapping up, you'll come back yeah. down again. We can, yeah, let me know. You, you guys can look at him now, see how, like, you know, energized he looks. And then, you know, five races in, we'll see a whole different. It, that That's definitely. See it, some bags really under your it eyes. Ta- it takes a toll on you. I ain't going to lie. I, yeah. I feel, I've been street outlaws, what, three years now? And I feel like I've aged 10 years. Like, I believe it's it. A, it's, a, it's a very, very hard course. Just, just in the three years that I was there. So when I started out, there was only eight races for MPK. Yeah. So you only raced eight times out of the year. You were good. Easy enough. We are now up to 15 races for that, plus two street shows, plus an international show that we go around the country. Yeah. So now it's it's And it's you did, grown. what, five, and five weeks over there? So. Five weeks over there. So you're talking 25 weeks out of a 52-week year are accounted for for... Just racing. Racing. Yeah. That's crazy. So last, last year, I was gone 39 weeks out of the year. To do, do styles on the road, doing stuff or uh, racing, you know, you know, doing anything that had something to do with the business. Yeah, and then um, maybe off some time for yep. something you want to do recreationally. So that that I, that's why I said this year I'm gonna experience some stuff. Uh, yeah. Tennessee, New York, Los Angeles, uh, Costa Rica. Like I want to experience some stuff this year. So. Good deal, man. Well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate. Guys, it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know the deal. But that'll do it. We will see you next time.